Order. Uh, we from the six from the 5:30 meeting. We are now in the council chambers at 6:30, and we call recreation. Tons of fun. Please come. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Sorry for the delay. You guys would mind name and title when you guys are the funeral mind. That'd be great. When you're ready, the floor is yours. Hi, Mary Keller, Deputy Director of Recreation Services. And Allison Albergini, Recreation Manager. They warned me this is running a little slow today. All right, we're all set. Yes. All right. So I have a short PowerPoint for you on camp. This summer, the mayor and deputy mayor came out and visited us, and I will not make it that long because I kept them for a long time. So uh, we were established in 2014. Um, this was our first year hosting camp at the Annex. In the past, we had been at JFK. Um, so just some basics on camp. Uh, this year, like I said, was the first year at the Annex. It's a program for Enfield residents entering grades one through nine in September. Um, we operate in one week sessions, so folks register for um, individual weeks, Monday through Friday they attend. It's a six to eight week summer, dependent on how many snow days we get for um, the school calendar. And currently we take 88 campers per week. We have to take them in groups that will fit on buses for field trips, so right now we accommodate two groups of buses and you have some photos here of the classroom space that we got to use this year was really nice um, because it wasn't a teacher's classroom that we only could bring in our supplies we were actually able to clean and decorate and um, so it had much more of a camp feel so there's something to do all day at camp for kids they do sports games arts and crafts um, big things that they're really into, dodgeball tournaments. We have a gaga pit, which is a fairly new activity that you see at a lot of um, overnight camps. It's inflatable, so we can move that around from place to place. The kids love that. They do arts and crafts. Tie-dyeing is really popular. Special events, the fire department comes out. We do egg drop contests um, from the ladder truck. Um, they go on a field trip every week. They swim. We do a Friday food activity, which is really popular. Um, and then we provide before and after care. So give you some more information. Um, they swim daily unless they're on a field trip that's a full day. All participants are swim tested every week, so we check if they're able to stay in the shallow end, if they need a flotation device, or they can use the whole pool. And um, it's staffed by our certified lifeguards. So field trips, very popular. A lot of the kids pick what weeks they're gonna go to camp if they don't come all summer based on the field trip. Um, they go to launch, quasi, bowling, basketball hall of fame, um, science center. So a lot of popular trips um, with the kids. A lot of places that if they're not going on a summer vacation, they do get to go somewhere. Um, pretty fun every week. And then we do bus transportation through Smith Bus. So on Fridays, we do a food activity to wrap up the week. Could be a pizza party, um, ice cream social, dirt cups with pudding and Oreo cookies, cupcakes, that kind of thing. Um, and we involve our, our staff, the lifeguards, uh, come down and the kids like to see them. That's a photo of them. Um, an attractive option for before, for camp, before and after care. We do before care from 7 to 8.30 in the morning and after care from 3.30 to 5, uh, or 5.30. For one fee, parents can have before and after, just use before if you wanna come Monday, Tuesday, one thing, um, Wednesday, Thursday, another. It's one nominal fee. They can drop off and pick up anytime within there. And it allows parents that work to have that option to drop off, um, go to work and come back. 
um, when they're done with work. We're only able, based on staffing, to um, accommodate 40 kids right now. Um, there's an additional fee, um, and if we were to expand, then we would have more spots for before and after care. It's our most popular thing that people ask for um, because our regular day is 8.30 in the morning to 3.30, and that doesn't quite cover the work day. So that is something that's very popular. Camp is so successful because of our staff. Um, in the top corner there, that's our camp director, Corey. She's been with us since 2012. She's a certified high school English teacher. Um, she's a lot of the reason that the kids continue to come back, in addition to um, staff that we're lucky enough to retain from year to year. Um, we try to have college-aged um, staff or um, adults that are teachers during the year. A lot of our staff are going to school for teaching social work, working with children. Um, so we have our camp director, three supervisors that oversee um, the different groups, and then we have eight camp counselors. Um, and like I said, we prefer that they're college students because we do ent take kids entering um, grade nine, so it's difficult sometimes when they're high school students. Um, and then we have our American Red Cross certified lifeguards. Staff go through extensive training. Um, supervisors, so the camp director, the head camp counselors, and myself are med administration trained. It's a three-year certification, so that allows us to accommodate any child who has um, a special need that needs medication. Um, and we have quite a few kids at camp every week that need some type of medication, whether it's for an allergy or um, a chronic illness. All staff are EpiPen um, certified, and that is a state law. So. All the staff are able to administer an EpiPen, which is a life-saving medication in case we have an allergic reaction. We are train all staff um, as mandated, since they're mandated reporters through the Department of Children and Families. We have a DCF worker that comes out and does um, training with us. And unfortunately, it, it is a semi-regular occurrence that at least once a season we do have to do a referral and staff are really good about letting us know and getting those referrals in um, before the end of the day. So it is a very important training. Um, all staff are Red Cross and CPR certified um, in first aid and CPR and then we do emergency and active shooter training with the police, fire and EMS. And then in addition, we do town policies, our program policies, recreational skills, and special needs training. So a lot of times people ask why camp, you know, it's fun, but is it a necessity? Um, we feel that it is. The NRPA Pulse, Park Pulse, um, NRPA is our national association. In August, they did this poll um, about what local what local folks think about their government providing um, affordable out-of-school time programming. It was popular amongst um, many different age groups. And then a statistic that you know we find sad but true that 56% of children spend less time outside than maximum security prisoners do. So camp is an opportunity to put their devices down, get outside, interact with kids, be physically active. Um, learn social skills um, and camp is popular every year we fill to capacity we have waiting lists um, and we have to turn people away so it is a popular program um, that is fully self-sustaining so that's camp in a nutshell if people have questions thank you very much any questions councilor no sure. what is the fee the fee um, was a hundred and twenty Five this year for a week session and so, uh, and where can people go to get more information on everything so typically we have information out on the upcoming season at the beginning of March um, we're looking to do it even a little bit earlier this year so camp ends and we start thinking about it again as soon as the new year rolls around thank you any questions Councilor Crisati I don't, I don't really have any questions um, I just want to say that this is a, a, a great program that you run. Um, yep. And all those years that you did it at JFK and now you're over at the town annex. My, my question to you is, 
which facility was better for you? Um, we liked JFK until we got to the annex, and it allowed us in the area that we're in more space to spread out. So um, we can keep better track of the kids. We have more storage. Uh, the gym is bigger. The pool is bigger. So staff, it was an adjustment to get used to, but they liked it much better. Yeah, the thing that I really like is that that you have certified teachers on staff. I think that's a big plus to your program. And then you have, um, you know, the training that you give to all of your staff is is awesome. Uh, Thank you. So keep up the good work, both of you. I'm really, really happy about this program that our town has, and that before and after care. Wow. That, that that is uh, a little new to me, which I think is huge, which helps a lot of families. Yeah, within the last three years, we had added the before care. We used to ha always have the after right. care, but the before care was that piece to allow people to drop off right. um, and then go to work. And let me tell you, it's, uh, it's an extension of uh, the educational system here in town, so keep up your good work. Um, you know, I recommend this program to anybody that's watching out in this TV, TV land here. I just have one other question for you. Have you gone on any whale watch trips with your your students? No. Okay, no. Good. I don't think they All would right. let me on a whale watch. Okay. All right. We, we go back a long way on, on a whale watch when, when Allison was a former student of mine. Okay, so. I, I may have thrown up on his shoes. Okay. <laughs> All right, but keep up the good work. Thank you. Falk and Counselor Denny. How long has the program been around? Since... 2004. So this. So when we started, there were 40 kids, and we have 88 now. Actually, the first couple of years we were at Hazardville Memorial, and we were probably averaging maybe 30 to 40 kids. Mm -hmm. So then you went to JFK, and the number you were able to expand that number. Mm -hmm. We had it, it th we took 88. Um, we at some times could take more than that, um, up to 96, but we capped it because we had some kids that would need a paraprofessional and we had to accommodate that person on the bus. Yeah. So. Do, you, do you anticipate getting bigger than 96? We're hoping, yes. Yeah. No, it's a great program, and uh, you know, I, I admire you for doing it. Uh, and the, uh, I'm sure the, the, the kids that go really appreciate it. That, you know, it's not just a fun time, it's an educational time too. So it's a great program. Thank you. Thanks. Councilor Denny? Yeah, well, you're doing a great job. What I wanted to ask, and I guess you answered the question, are we expanding that program every year for more bodies or is it cost prohibited to expand it more? I guess that's a loaded question, but I'd like to see I like to see not turning anybody away if we could do, I don't know what you're going to do this year, but let's say 100. Well, could we, we do could it. Could we do that or we have to expand the staff, of course? We would have to expand the staff. And that would be cost prohibited or would we just charge the, the same amount and we could? The user fee covers the staff. It would? Yes. Okay. So we could expand to, if we had the, the space, which we do, yes. to 100 then probably. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. I guess what I took away from it is the annex is a better place. You have the ability to expand. The swimming lessons, also we went to see the town run swimming lessons, that works better at the annex. And there's gonna be a lot of things going on at JFK. And I guess for me, we said we're starting budget day one. And we heard that, you know, you run in the black. People pay for a service that the town provides and it runs in the black and people appreciate it, enjoy it, and it's an excellent program. I myself would like to see us say to them, you know, they need to know in December because they have a waiting list whether they will have availability or whether they're going to be turning away people. So this is something that you gotta do before the bottom line of budget. And for me, I would like to see them stay there. I don't want to keep moving everybody all around. I'd like to see them stay at the annex. And I'd like you know, us to understand that we do do budget all year round. Thank you. Councilor Scala. 
Just more of a comment. Um, my kids went there. They enjoyed it. For what it's worth, when I allowed them to pick which camps they wanted to go, they always picked tons of fun. Um, I, this again, um, just for me, I was procrastinating and missed being able to sign them up this last summer. So the one camp they picked, which was yours, um, they couldn't go to because there was a wait list. So I would love to see it expanded for people like me who wait till the last minute to sign their kids up for camp. Anyone else have any questions? You know, thank you for coming. And again, I appreciate the fact that you two took the time that you had and you lobbied me pretty hard. So I, I appreciate it. And uh, We thought we uh, were spending the week. And, and, and I think, <laughs> but this is what we're trying to achieve as a town, right? We're trying to find programs. And again, self, my favorite phrase is self-sustaining. I love that phrase. It is fantastic because it means people actually have some skin in the game, right? They're just paying for that service, so they must appreciate that service. And I know you guys do a great job. My kids went there as well. And again, I, I agree. If this is something you feel you can expand, then we need to talk about this in December, not March, when it may be too late. And that's the point of starting the budget early, is where, again, if we're providing good service to, to folks and they're willing to pay a fair, reasonable fee that sustains that service, and oh, by the way, we can actually hire more people to be able to say, that's a win-win for everybody, for the town, for the residents, and of course, for you and your staff, which is, of course, the big thing. So again, I think that's what we need to kind of, I don't know, again, the timing of all, if it goes to leisure committee or whatever it may be, but that's something I think, I guess the timing for you, for you guys, when do you need to know is it March too late? Is it December? I mean, I guess that's the question. I mean, I'm not putting you in a spot, but at least give us some timing so we can figure it out. I think March would be too late. Mm -hmm. We need to know probably in December. Okay. Um, it's it's it seems simple to just add another ten or twenty or thirty right. spots, but you have to factor in all of the behind the scenes that happen. Mm -hmm including hiring staff and we have had an issue in hiring staff in the last few years that we used to be competitive we used to pay m more than minimum wage and we are barely paying higher than minimum wage and we have lost a lot of great staff mm -hmm. over that not only for camp but aquatics basketball a lot of our programs so for us if we want to expand we need to start that process now because we will have to come to you with some kind of pay scale adjustment for seasonal staff to attract and retain and then start that recruiting process earlier. Um, we aren't going to register people until we know we have enough staff that we can right. cover that. Yep, fair. So if we can't hire staff or we can't get that third bus or book a facility that's going to take us on a field trip for more than 90 people, we need to start that process now. Yeah. So Mr. Mayor, we have a, yep. we're scheduling a leisure services subcommittee uh, soon. So what we'll do, I'll ask these two uh, young ladies to start to prepare that and look into the information so that we can present it to the subcommittee. And then if it passes favorably with them, we can bring it to the council because December really is here. So we might as well start tonight. Perfect. And again, thank you for you know, relaying to your staff how we are changing the way we do budget. And I appreciate the fact you're taking advantage of the way we are doing budget now. So if December it is, then I think that's what we should do. I mean, I think if, if I know, again, my kids went there, other folks' kids went there. It's a great program. And uh, if you feel we can expand it and serve more kids, then let's, let's schedule it for December. Anything else from us that you'd like from us while you got the floor? I mean, remember, you took advantage of the time you had before. <laughs> I, 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 I'll, sp I'll speak for myself. I would love to be able to move the recreation office out there as well. I think it would just be more practical. We could run more programming. Um, as you know, we've had an issue with finding someone to run pickleball on Monday, Wednesday, right. Friday mornings. Mm -hmm. We're not on site. If we were on site, it would make it easier that if somebody called out or we didn't have somebody that we could we could supervise until we could get somebody. So we're missing out on an opportunity of not being able to utilize that facility more if we were, if our office space was there. As you can see, Mary has been with us a while. She's very savvy. She's not going to waste well, an opportunity. Perfect. So we will also look at that and have her report at Leisure Services uh, for that request. Well, again, I appreciate it. I mean, you're being honest with us. And that's what we need to do to be able to make budget decisions is the and I appreciate it so again I think and we're doing it in a timely manner and if there's something I, I appreciate you coming here and being frank with what you want that's what that's what this is about to actually allow you folks to 
to tell us what you feel is working and what we can afford. And if it's providing a great service, then that's something we should, again, invest in. So, again, I appreciate you uh, coming here and doing what you did when we were out there. Oh, in a, I got a question. I'm oh, sorry, what we were doing <laughs> back in the, in, the, in the fall. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, being that we're talking in generalities, I was curious as to how the uh, skateboard park is going. You know, we did phase one. Mm -hmm. Is it being fully utilized and other plans for phase two or three? I am sure that the skaters would love phase two and three, but at fifty to a hundred thousand dollars to add those in, mm -hmm. that's something that council would have to look at. Mm -hmm. in a now, are there in preliminary staffing. designs for the phases? When we did phase one, they they gave us phase two and phase three examples of it. So there are rough designs, mm, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. The biggest thing is the money. I'm sure it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oops, sorry, Deputy Mayor. Actually, I, I have pickleball here because I have heard from our pickleball players that, I don't know, and I haven't played pickleball, so I, I guess they're saying that the wall, the end lines to the wall are very tight at the La Mania Center, and it's not. And um, I do recall trying to get parking for the La Mania Center and being really um, kind of... Uh, in a pickle, so to speak, uh, trying to put in, what do we try to put in, 10 spaces. So I don't know where you're parking everybody for pickleball, because I know people come in from surrounding communities, because it's sort of like something that rotates around to the surrounding towns. They go to Longmeadow, they go to South Windsor, they go to East Windsor, and it's a really, it's an up and coming sport. I don't know, I think when I retire, I'm gonna try it out. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So we, I think we move right in, or um, yeah. So uh, motion to adjourn the special meeting. So moved. Councilor yeah, Falk, second. seconded by Councilor Arnone. All those in favor, by a show of hands. Okay, we have. I think it's seven o'clock. Yeah. We got a minute. Green. Minute to seven. Light. God, didn't you do it last time? Six fifty-nine. You okay? You're upset, Lori? Yeah. You're upset? Yeah. Okay. I'm bringing new batteries for this thing. Uh, sure, it's probably old. the meeting to order um, Tuesday November 13 2018 um, item number one prayer Councilor on Geyer thinking about Veterans Day this past week so I have a prayer for our veterans dear Lord we honor our veterans worthy men and women who gave their best when called upon to serve and protect our country bless them for their unselfish Bless them for their unselfish service and their enduring efforts to preserve our freedom and safety. Bless them for the sacrifices they made and for their many different contributions to America's victories over tyranny and oppression. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. It's back to you. Thanks, Lori. Item number three, roll call, please. Here. Councillor Arnone? Here. Councillor Bosco? Councillor Sakala? <coughs> Here. Councillor Crisati? Here. Councillor Davis? Here. Councillor Denny? Here. Councillor Falk? Here. Mayor Ludwig? Here. Councillor Muller? Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Here. 
There's 10 members present. One is absent. Item number four, fire evacuation announcement. In case of a fire, we have uh, exit doors at the back of the uh, of the town council chambers. You either go right or left out the doors orderly, or you can go out to the doors to your right, to our left, take the first left, go down the stairs, and out the, the uh, sliding doors into the parking lot case of a fire. Item number five, meeting uh, minutes of preceding meeting, minutes, excuse me, minutes of preceding meetings, excuse me. Uh, motion to uh, approve special meeting October 1st, 2018. So moved. By Councillor Danny, seconded by Councillor Falk. Any omissions, conversation, deletions on the minutes? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, any abstentions? Looks like seven in favor, zero against, right? Yep. Or eight, eight in favor, zero against, sorry. Yep. Um, uh, do we have a motion to approve regular meeting minutes of October 1st, 2018? By Councilor Crisati? By Councilor Denny. Any deletions, omissions, corrections to uh, the minutes? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions, eight in favor, zero against. And do we have a motion to approve the regular meeting of October 15th, 2018? By Councilor Muller. Second. Seconded by Councilor Crisati. Is there any omissions, deletions, corrections? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed? We have eight in favor, zero against. Item number six, special guest, is Bill, and I apologize, Bill, if I wrote, Bellock? Bellock, please come up and I'll up, give sir. a little. How you doing? Intro, come on up, Bill. Take a seat right there in front. Uh, Mr. Bellock was kind of provide us, these are the, his report. Uh, we have some for the uh, public and press as well, but he's just going to make an oral presentation. I'll tell you just on a thumbnail sketch, um, I invited Mr. Bellock to come because we talk a lot in the town about revitalizing Enfield and other areas of the town. We're happy when larger corporations come in and sometimes we help them with tax abatements and other uh, stimulus or their state grants. Uh, on this occasion, we had right adjacent to Town Hall, the St. Adalbert's Church, and I'll call it a campus, that had uh, been closed and really was falling into disrepair. Mr. Bellet came in, didn't ask for any of those kinds of assistance, but of his own accord developed it and turned at least the school portion of it into one bedroom uh, apartments. I had occasion he had come forward and he wants to do more. And uh, I'll tell you, in the dictionary there's definition for shy and shrinking violet. Mr. Bellock's name is nowhere near that. So I don't know, well, he'll give you his unvarnished experience, some good, probably some not so good with the town. But despite all of that, he's still inspired uh, and enthusiastic about developing further out there. And he has some good plans. Our new planning director, uh, Lori uh, Witten, is working with him. She actually went out and looked at the property with our two assistant planners that were very impressed, as was I when I went out there last week. I think there's great potential there that would benefit the community um, and also the town. Plus, Mr. Bellick is willing to do it. And I think it's an asset. One, I think it's now probably a, uh, a, a diamond in the rough, but it used to be a gorgeous state-of-the-art gymnasium. What a facility. He's willing to develop that and share its use with the town and, and for our communities. So for all those reasons, we're working with him. As he and I both said, we don't know if we can get there, but we're going to give it our best try. So without further ado, I just wanted to say that the reason he's here is when we ask people to do these things, I think we have to thank them when they come through and they do it. And we have to let the community know that there are individuals who are willing to put their own commitment, their own, you know, their money where their mouth is, as it were, and do something great for our community. The apartments are, are beautiful. As Lori and I both said, I would live there. We have a lot of good people who are living there, and it's what we want. It's good housing for good uh, residents of the town that we want to keep and those that we want to attract. And he's a hands-on owner of the property. And with our help, he wants to stay with the property and shepherd it through into the future if he can afford to do so. So those are some challenges, but I just wanted to recognize him and thank him and bring him to the attention of the council and our residents for a job well done. And without further ado, I'll ask him, he's not going to go through this entire presentation, but he's going to give you the high points. Then you have it so you can uh, look at it at home. Mr. Bell, thank well, you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. The floor is yours. Pardon? The floor is yours. Uh, if, if it's, it's red, on, the bright, if it's bright, it's on. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. Um, normally, when I come in this uh, chamber, it's like leaving a cold sweat. So this is a, a little, <laughs> little, little better. Um, the uh, you're all familiar with the Santa Dalbert's property, um, and when you look at the uh, presentation, um, I'll start off by saying that's my side of things. I'm sure that town staff may differ in terms of my interpretation, but I'm just giving you an overall, overview of what, of what I went through to, uh, to get, get things done. Um, the property itself, 
I uh, also put it out there. I also put on the the if you look at the front page, uh, the cover page, uh, that is actually the uh, the front page of the annual report for the uh, Capital for Change, which was the funding uh, source for the property. And the woman you see there is actually Mrs. Lopez, one of my uh, tenants, and that's her front door of her apartment. And uh, on the second page, I put my card. Um, either individually or as a group, I'd be happy to show you the property at any time. I'm there pretty much every day. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, so, that's, so that, that, that's, uh, that's out there any time you want to. Um, a real, real brief history. Uh, I first looked at the property in 2003. Um, I met Father John Weaver. I don't know if anybody's a parishioner at St. Adelbert's. Um, he is one of the last two priests for the uh, Catholic, you know, for the uh, Enfield Catholic churches. Um, being the Catholic Church, it, we had a rapid two-year negotiation for uh, price and terms. Um, I mean, you work in an institution that works in hundreds of years, so they were in no particular rush. Um, the school, there was multiple applications which are, are detailed in that report. Um, it's, they're all things you have to do in, in order. Um, Starting with a, uh, a uh, ZBA application, more more than anything else, just to clarify some of the re some of the contradictions between the I don't know if you ever looked at your zoning uh, regulations. There are some things that don't quite line up, so we had to make sure that we are on the same page on that. Then it was a four lot subdivision. If you go by the property, you see there's the school, the rectory, uh, the church, and the convent. Um, the church is still active. They have a very active, uh, very popular Sunday service. Um, the convent has been closed for, I think, 30 years. That was a guess. And the rectory, the last, Father O'Brien moved out last fall. He still had some stuff in the, till this spring, but that is no longer used for housing priests. So right now we have two, two of the uh, four properties that are being used um, for their intended uh, purpose. Um, the actual, uh, there's a long litany of, of procedures to get through the zoning and the, uh, um, the building department. I won't say anything about that. It's, everyone has their own uh, history and experience with those two departments. I have to say honestly, and I'm not doing this because I'm in front of you now, but there has been kind of a sea change over the last two months, and I don't know quite where it's coming from. I d didn't know um, Lori uh, Witten, Lori Witten. I knew her of a reputation. I've never worked with her in East Windsor. Uh, but by reputation, she's considered she's top flight. She's very, very highly respected. Uh, the new building department, the head of the building department, um, I knew his father. I'm 65 years old, so uh, that's how far back he was a building official in the town of Manchester. I didn't know his son, but I knew his father. Um, the so much, so much of this is attitude, uh, and I'm not going to go into it, but just it's very disturbing when you don't get emails returned or phone calls returned or, or I, I could go into chapter and verse of a series of little things, but in cumulatively they're, they're, they're very, very, they're hard to work with. Um, the, that's the bad news. The good news is, is that we have 20 units. I had absolutely no problem renting them. Um, it's in Thompsonville. I, I don't want to say a good or bad part of Thompsonville, but it's, it's, a, it's a nice area of Thompsonville. Uh, my rents range from $930 to $900 a month, which is not the peak of the, uh, of the uh, market, um, nor is it the lowest. It's basically based on FMR, fair market rents, which is where I have to, my funding is based on some reflection of that. Um, the, I have a great group of tenants, uh, and it's as young as 24, as old as 90. Um, being a single-story building, it lends itself to no steps and getting in and out pretty, pretty readily. Um, the uh, uh, the ninety-year-old's a character. He's a very avid golfer. Um, watches everything on every golf tournament there is on TV. Um, the uh, if, if Justin Thomasville in general, I think it, it kind of backed into transit-oriented development. This was done long before the. The uh, state made the you know the commitment to uh, even though you don't have a station you're part of the Springfield. I did have a handful of people from Springfield who um, are employed uh, at the new casino, so there's clearly some market there as far as the Thomasville section. I believe that if they actually do have train service, Thompsonville will be a, it's one stop. It's 10 minutes away. So I think that's real for for Thompsonville. Um, also, the type of rents where my market is. Um, 
you know, you're talking the type of, I was involved with a property in Norwich way back when, when they first started the casinos, and they, the 15 to $25 an hour person was our bread and butter renter. And uh, that's, I think the same thing's gonna happen here at some point. Um, the, uh, looking forward, uh, I've asked, actually it was very nice, uh, Lori Witten um, and the building department to take a look at both the rectory and the convent in terms from both from a zoning perspective and from a building perspective to get their insight in terms of what can be done with it. Um, and uh, it's a little different than the school. The school is pretty straightforward um, as far as what you had. Uh, I haven't heard back yet, but they were they went out there. Miss uh, Lori Witten and the planning department went out to the walk the site, which was uh, very helpful. Um, the there's it's been a great. Last year, uh, I think I've been a good neighbor. I signed off on the uh, fireworks committee uh, for four years. We're within the 400, 300 feet with uh, Fire Marshal uh, uh, Kosensky goes out there and measures. They've only set the roof on fire twice, which is uh, really not that bad. Once the gym and once the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, what do you call it, the uh, garage. They actually didn't set it on fire. They set the pine straw on the roof on fire. So now the last two years, I get a free blow. They blow off the pine straw before they have the fireworks. So I'll consider it, you know, it's, it's evened up. Um, the, uh, we had, a, we had as a, some, somewhat funny, on May 4th, we had an open house uh, before we had opened really for rent, uh, renting. I had expected about 15, 20, 25 people, you know, just put a sign out in front and word of mouth. Uh, got some cheese plates, a little bit of beer, some wine. Um, 105 people later, uh, they cleaned us out. Um, a lot of old parishioners, you'd be surprised how many people are still in the area. Uh, a lot of people are just curious in Thompsonville. Uh, and it was, it was a lot of fun, but it was way beyond what I, what I anticipated. Um, going forward, uh, I broke the report down in terms of good things and bad things, uh, 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 some history, planning, um, building, I do have an ongoing issue with the, uh, with the uh, tax assessment, which has been going on for two years. Um, I actually have a meeting tomorrow with uh, the, uh, uh, one of the town attorneys and the assessor to work on that. We did file, uh, uh, we have a, on uh, Superior Court, there has been a, a loss, which we have to do. There's no way around that. And uh, so that, that'll work its way through one way or the other. And it's funny that I, the two women who are ahead of me, uh, the real reason that I did the school, I've done some renovations of existing structures. That's kind of probably my, my, my niche, um, some in Rockville, some down for downstate. But the school is good. It's a center loaded uh, corridor, one level, very straightforward. It wasn't, there's not a lot of bells and whistles this. But it is the best grade school gym I have ever seen in my life. I bought it for the gym. Um, I played basketball my whole life, I played college basketball, and this is, this is not a grade school gym. I'm sure, I don't know how many people have been in this gym. I heard you talking about pickleball. Uh, it's a uh, La Little Man La Mania uh, Center. Uh, I, did I pronounce that right? The, uh, is a, it's well maintained, it's a nice, uh, it's an, it is what it is, but it's nowhere near the gymnasium. Um, it's just simple as that. Uh, and uh, so uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Bronson, I'd like to pursue trying to do something with the gym as far as renovating, renovating it and have it some kind of a recreation gym use. How we, uh, all the areas there have lack of parking. You have to have parking, you have to have access. Um, it's in, it, when I say it's in rough shape, you know, roof, floor, but it's 60 years, or it's 1960 it was built, so it's, it's quite, a, quite a bit old. But the structure itself is spectacular, it really is. And uh, so I did, got the first part done, and we'll see what the next part is. And the, uh, um, any questions? Thank you, first of all, thank you for coming. Oh, okay. Yep, thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah, Councilor Denny. Is there any, uh, anything going on negotiations with, uh, with the rectory and, and the, uh, the convent? The convent's been uh, condemned and, and it's, uh, <laughs> it, I mean, it's fallen down. Yes. And it has been for a long time. I'm a parishioner there. Yeah. But is there any, uh, do you have any use for those <clears throat> facilities or would you use them for parking if they were knocked down? Well, I have, I uh, have, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I have the, uh, um, I have, options to purchase both. 
uh, both the uh, rectory and the convent. Uh, the convent clearly, you'd have it's it's shot. I think it's it's in the report. Uh, you have seventy thousand dollars of asbestos remediation. Uh, one of the things that you run into, going back to the uh, uh, the tax issue, is that about two years ago when I started my tax issue, I had Father John file an appeal just to have, I think they have the rectory assessed at $400,000. Um, it's not worth anything. I mean, it has a negative value. Um, so my thought was, my first thought was, we do something with the gym um, that, and I know you have to, I don't know how we know the site, but if you take down the rectory, I'm, a, uh, the, I'm sorry, the convent, and basically follow the contours of the site. It comes right out to the corner of the gym. I have an existing, I think it's in there, I have an existing request into the town about picking up 1,700 square feet. I don't have quite enough room around the end of the gym to get to the, to get to the rear part of the gym. But then it would make sense just to tear it down, use it for parking, for access, have a nice, so, you know, I'm, you know it's, your, it's your decision, but the, you know, being a city kid, uh, Someone on that end of Thompsonville and someone this end of Thompsonville, you have the ability to walk, ride a bike, or it's easy, you know. And and you're not the, the confidence is never going to become uh, you, the amount of money you have to put into it to bring it back to its current condition just doesn't make any sense. The rectory is in good shape. The rectory is uh, is been heated, has been maintained. Uh, you know, it's as I asked uh, of the uh, planning department and the, and the building department, I mean, what is it? I mean, is it a single family home? Is it a, it had uh, eight priests. It had, I don't know if anybody been in the rectory. It's uh, it's basically just a big, big house, you know, eight bedrooms. And uh, so, um, but no, the rectory is worth saving if you can find the right use. The convent should be torn down, but then you run into how do you do it with the with a four hundred thousand dollar tax obligation, which makes you there's no use that can make sense for that. It would be nice to be used with the uh, it'd be on a parishioner. Um, the first go around with Father uh, uh, Father John was to it would make sense to tear it down, and have a better handicap parking uh, situation for the church because it's right on the same grade and you could just you know pull right in. Um, but it's it's it just sits out there. There's nothing nothing today. Nothing is uh, nothing's imminent. Thank you, yes. Councilor Nolan. So, first of all, thank you for oh. bringing actually <coughs> renovating this property into you know taxable mm -hmm. uh, piece of property for the town, especially for Thompsonville itself. Uh, mm -hmm. I know the fire department struggles, and uh, you know, and, and there's a lot of non-profit. Uh, housing there right. that that uh, doesn't get uh, uh, the proper tax to it. So, right. you know, I thank you for bringing this this property around. I know it's been difficult, and following this for a couple <laughs> of years, and I, and I'm glad we're seeing the light of day um, with uh, you know ch turnover right. in uh, personnel, and, and we hope that they work a lot harder mm -hmm. on getting these things accomplished. Because to me, it was a no-brainer from day one that this should have sailed straight through, um, and w we don't have that. Uh, we're still working on that uh, that ty <laughs> type of um, welcoming, yes. uh, especially in that area of town. We're trying to do it with TIF, TIF districts and everything that may make uh, investors like you a little more um, apt to come in and, and build in that area. And, and we do have another school on the other side of town, if you're interested. I, <laughs> so. uh, I have a Friday. I'm going to sign a contract for another school. Um, and if I, I could go through the list of what they're offering, tax incremental financing, de right. deferral, uh, grant for asbestos. I'm helping them write with uh, reps of Courtney writing it. I mean, there's, it's a shopping, it's small. I mean, I understand, I'm little. This is, I'm not a big player. This is, 20 units is not a big, it doesn't make an imp impact one way or the other, but I'm your bread and butter because these are the kind of things that you can do relatively well five years, relatively quickly. And uh, but I, it's the problem with it is scale. I mean, if you look on the, uh, uh, do you are you familiar with Rockville uh, section mm -hmm. of Rockville? Absolutely. Um, there is a where Ellington Avenue and Prospect Street come together. Um, we have a there's a red mansion there. I rented that in the uh, uh, that's mine, and I oh, put that into Veterans Housing. It's on the tax roll because housing stays on the tax roll. But that's, you know, that was once again a, in a basically an abandoned building. So if you don't do something with it, bad things happen. I mean, they, you know, it's as simple as that. The problem with things my size is that scale is that most of these DOH, CH, CHFA, capital, all these programs are based for these very large projects because your transaction cost is so large. So if you read in the newspaper and you say, 
uh, well, the nonprofit I worked with in another property, they were doing a project in Hartford, $375,000 a unit. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling, you know, and, but it's also much bigger and you have bond underwriting and council and all that stuff. My size is, is, is something you can do in the Thompsonville section. I think someday, and I'm, you're, once again, I probably won't be living here then, but someday someone's going to have to do something in Thompsonville in general, especially if the train station takes off because the density that they have and the infrastructure is already there. Uh, it's, uh, it, it can happen, just not one mega project, five decent sized projects. You right, your size. So we, yes. we need to start catering back towards your size developer as opposed to we're, we're really easy on a, a large corporation that wants a tax you know, uh, cut here in town to build a building, but we ignore the small developer that is really, like you said, the bread and butter because everything in Thompsonville is small. We don't right. have a, a Montgomery. We don't have a right. you know, huge, uh, that has already been done for us, but we do have so many, so many small, uh, right, Bigelow has already been done. Right. But we have a lot of small properties that could use people like you. So we, well, need, to, we need to learn from you. Well, they had my background, a very, are you familiar with the Cheney Mill District in Manchester? Absolutely. The company yeah. I worked for did the very first Cheney Mill uh, District. Renovation. Uh, for, for mill renovation. And what people forget, that was 11 and a half years from the time it was proposed to the time it was actually funded and built out. I mean, it takes forever. Uh, Smaller scale is not, you don't have that because the numbers are, are easier to attain. Going back to the, to the convent, uh, the convent's a great site, but if you're carrying it on the tax roll at $400,000, how, how do you get there, you know? Uh, if I had known there was, uh, if I had known that there was, a, all I wanted to do tax-wise was pay my bills based on my actual cost and pay the same tax as everybody else. That's all I wanted to do. I, I can, it can work that way. Uh, but next time I'll knock on your door and ask for the other stuff. You know? Absolutely. But the, uh, um, I'm sorry. Thank you. No, that's uh, you, no. awesome. Council Grisati. Yeah, um, Bill, welcome to Thompsonville. Uh, <laughs> so your plans for the gymnasium. Yes. I think it's uh, much needed, especially in Thompsonville area, um, especially if you make it uh, you know, available to the public right. to be able to use for what, whatever. You know, that gymnasium there for a number of years was the basis of CUIO basketball here in Enfield. And what a, what a facility, and basketball used to be huge here in town, all right? Now, we've had a number of courts taken away from the kids in Thompsonville for whatever reasons, whether it's parking lots or whatever. Um, I think your plan that you have is an excellent plan. I think that it would be very welcomed. That place would be used. If it would open 24-7, guess what? It would be used 24-7. And, you know, getting the kids off the streets, activities um, for the people of uh, Thompsonville to come down and, and, and use something like that. I would love to see your plans on, on that. Um, but I think it's a fantastic idea. You have to utilize that section. I know that in your original plans that <clears throat> when you first had started, I believe it was something that was in the process for just for residents. But I like the, the idea of this gymnasium being used for being able to use for town. Right. Uh, and I'm glad that, that you have a pretty good relationship with the people that are in um, developmental services that are that are helping you out now right um so we're going to make it user friendly for you know you to develop more in town you well know, if just, you looked at the very first uh uh, uh blurb in here is that eight people that i worked with and i went through my emails and through the correspondence be it at the planning department or economic whatever they're no longer here right. uh and I, each time, and I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting on a soapbox, but each time <coughs> you got to start all over, you know, with a, with a relationship, with a, with an information. And uh, the gym is simple as far as it, it doesn't make any sense financially per se. Mm -hmm. But I heard somebody said uh, you liked it that it's self-sustaining. Um, right. It's just a matter of, and there are there, you know, there's a uh, there is a state program involved for small communities for community-based. You know, activities. Um, yeah, there's no question. I, pickleball. I just started playing pickleball in South Windsor. But the uh, yeah, but basketball, volleyball, pickleball. 
senior walking, uh, it's a core, and once you tear it down, you couldn't possibly build that court again and make sense. You just can't. It's, it just won't make any sense. But the uh, and then they can have some and its location. How often do you get a facility, which is really literally contiguous to town-owned property? I mean, I want to put a, I want to put a playground there. I would think a playground around the side would be great because people have the, you know. Um, but I'm a physical physical. I mean, a physical fitness exercise person. But the uh, and if the there's a great stage at the end um, that's it's complete. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe it's a uh, maybe I'm not quite sure how it works financially. But the first time, the first step was to find out is there land available to take the logistical issues in terms of access and parking. Let's start mm -hmm. there. If we have that, then you can start to formulate a budget and a, and a renovation plan. Um, and then go from there. And I know how, and I and I can't take the parking from the from the apartments. I don't, but you can do it without that. And uh, so, you know, I mean, uh, is it Chief Proventure? Uh, uh, Proventure. Uh, he he is just retired, but there's. Oh right. well, yeah. He, was well, the, he, the chief. he used to say, every time I came over, that he was the all-time <laughs> leading scorer in CYO basketball. And I, t I took that with a grain of salt, you know. But the, uh, <laughs> no, you know, it's okay. But uh, no, I would like to, I like I like the first shot is try to bring the gym back. Well, and then we'll I, take I, from there. I think it's a great idea. Okay. Plus, I know uh, three people that live there. They love it. In in the uh, yes. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So, but okay. thank you. I don't want to hold you. Yeah, uh, I actually have three organizations who love the gym, and right. I scored 20 points when I was a kid there. So, <laughs> oh, I, I could take Provencher off the dribble. <laughs> uh, Councilor Falk. Yeah. Uh, Last time I was in that uh, that gym was probably back in the uh, mid 1970s when we used to have dances in there. Oh, bring in uh, local bands and fill the place. So it has more uh, usage or possibility for usage other than athletic events. Uh, there's a stage there, right? Yo, a very there is a woman from uh, the local theater group who, in the beginning, because he have to. Basically, kind of, yet separated from the church, from the school. I mean, there was no, we had to. So there is no power to it right now. It's sealed. It's, it's there. But the building, I mean, you really have to see it. I mean, the, uh, 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 it's. I just fell in love with the gym. The school was nice, but I really wanted the gym. You know. I, yeah. I'm just throwing out the idea that it's it has more value than just athletic value. It could be used for a lot of different functions because it does have a stage. Yes. If you have, and think about it, all the shortcomings, most everything in the Thompsonville section is lack of parking. And uh, I heard Miss, the woman on Mrs. Uh, on the, like, Lamagna, I keep butchering, Lamagna? Yeah. Uh, there is no parking. Right. So how do you do, like, let's, and I have a CYO uh, basketball, a former NBA basketball player from Springfield who wants to do a AU program in the summer. Right. That's the that's 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 a gift because summertime indoor gyms is, is nothing. But but that you can't build your business about that. But he needs 70, 80 car parking. Well, I don't have that. The church does, you know, across the street from where they are. But you have to, and certainly town hall on you know after hours on weekends. Uh, so there's a lot of if you can solve parking and can solve access, you can figure out the money. You can always figure out the money. Okay. One, one last thing, and, and we have this lovely building right next to the railroad tracks down there that's just waiting to be renovated. <laughs> you have any interest in that? It's uh, uh, yeah, I'll look at anything. But the uh, would normally, I've probably looked. I did this the other day. I think I've looked at 70 buildings for for adoptive reuse. Uh, at my size, I mean, there's much bigger Montgomery. You know, people forget how long the package for these things. Uh, uh, to do. I mean, I have a master's degree in finance. I am a J. I, I have background in it. These are not easy. These are not short term. There's hundreds of thousands of dollars up front to get to that that point. Uh, the major problem is almost always environmental, almost always, and that that's just a number that's huge relative to the scope of renovation, and there's just no money to do it. So that's like this property I'm looking at in, in uh, Groton. Uh, it's seven hundred thousand dollars of remediation for twenty units. How do you? But you're going to have to do it anyway. So it's not like it's you're not going to do it. Just how do you do it? So you get you you get approved what you want to do, and then you work figure out how to pay for it, not the other way around. So, so tell them we did the uh, environmental on it. So you can go look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, it? Okay. so real, sorry, real quick, Deputy Mayor Suzak. Okay. Actually, that gymnasium has been looked at a couple of times in leisure. And if anybody can find the Higgins Park plan, 
that has walking trails and what it does is it opens up that fence and you can walk from the parking lot at the town hall to the gymnasium i've so, discussed that with mr bellick and we're gonna we're gonna uh gonna use mr bellick for, as a as an expert and, and get a lot of the information that he's garnered over all of his decades control the old noah webster I want to. I don't want to overwhelm him because <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. he's uh, he's unused to this kind of reception. Got, I'll just tell you, you got, he he's you been successful Noah, here. You despite got the old Noah Webster, by the way, he's been successful despite our best efforts to try to stop him along the way. So just imagine what we can do in partnership with him. <laughs> so and we're, so we're thank committed you. to do that. We actually have we have Noah Webster building on Rufa, on uh, Brandon Road, which is an old school similar. I, to, it's, any any old okay. Hey, it's, it's out there if you want to. Take any a look. old school works. It's if perfect. You have, if it's if it's one level, great, because they don't have uh, ADA issues. Right. If it's less than 20 we units, we don't know. I, I tell you, you, that. you can start. You right. can start working. There's all these Too things much. that just blow your budget out of the water. You know, St. Adelbert's, uh, and you also got to buy it right. I mean, uh, right. in Groton, uh, they're paying me to take the building, right. and I'm and I'm and I'm probably overpaying. You know, but it's just <laughs> it just money is is relative in terms of how you get to where you got. The gym by itself, going back to the gym is very cost effective. That's not a big, it's a lot closer than you think. Uh, I got the, three organizations I'd love to run it right now. Yeah. Okay. So thank, <laughs> for, well, thank you very much for thank coming. You thank you very much, much Mr. Bella. get a trophy or a plaque? <laughs> well, next time. That's the next phase <laughs> yeah. of your project. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, I, I would just like to conclude that I think it is so important for our residents to know there are success stories, that things are happening. And to Mr. Arnone's point, we've talked to, and I've been in contact with Mr. Adam Wynn Stanley, who's on a much bigger scale, but he said the key to your success is all of these right. pieces of the puzzle. And I'll tell you, it's gratifying to hear, despite he had trouble before, and I'm sorry for that, I am glad to hear that Lori Witten, our new building inspector, are helping. I think there has been a groundswell of change, and I'll tell you, we have just hired the deputy director, and we will be announcing and bringing him out, former state employee with vast experience in grants and other areas. He is going to be another great addition to the team who will also be working with Mr. Bellock. So thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, Donald. <clears throat> Director Nunes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we wanted him to come as a special guest because, as you well know, um, Enfield has recently become very well known for our bridges or bridge issues. So if we completed the South River Street Bridge, we have now come uh, to the Bridge Lane Bridge, or culvert as it's been, uh, come to be uh, called. Just want everyone to know, Mr. Nunes has been working on this, as has staff, since the issue arose. He's going to give an overview. I'd asked him to prepare this. So I think we're going to basically just give you a quick overview of how this came about, where we are, how we seek to address it going forward. Uh, and I think it's a comprehensive uh, presentation and you'll be able to uh, ask questions of him. But I just wanna say that, you know, we do address these things. We take them very seriously. We reach out to our residents. Mr. Uh, Noons talked to residents from the area. Uh, we followed up with information. And unfortunately, government, it doesn't move as quickly as some would like especially me, uh, but we do our best. Uh, council has been very uh, uh, responsive, especially in the South River Street where you identified the funds. We came up with the plan and we did it in a record time. And I thank the council for that, Mr. Nunes. Hopefully we will have the same outcome on Bridge Lane for all of our residents. I will just say from the outset, I went out there immediately. I went out there with Mr. Nunes. It's unacceptable. I've been out there with council people, we've looked at it, and it really is unacceptable for a residential area. But he's gonna tell you why, how we reached what the plan called for, and what we can do to rectify it and make sure it doesn't happen going forward. Again, as with all things, there's a cost uh, associated with it, and that will be the council's decision uh, when he's done. Mr. Noons? Welcome, welcome, Donald. Good evening, go Bruins. Yes, I know, I, I saw that, I, got, I see the, the thing around the neck too. I'll, I'll bring my Penguins one next game. Okay. Next time. All right, so how it all started is on Bridge Lane, we had a deteriorated 36 inch corrugated metal pipe, which, uh, which again runs across through here. The guide rail system, as you can see in the picture, just completely defunct and um, would, not, would not be able to stop a car for anything. And it also, all the road road off directly goes into the tributary, which leads to Beeman's Brook. So through the design process, Connecticut Deep and United States Army Corps of Engineers had specific requirements for us. One of them was to take the 36 inch round pipe and make it a five by five inside dimensions box culvert, which is basically quadruple in size of what we had out there. In that we have to put two feet of natural stream bottom, which is like the 
putting stuff that you some people may have saw it actually putting inside the pipe. Uh, that's for uh, fish habitat and aquatic species, so the fish don't hurt themselves, their bellies with stone and other kind of things that was required. We had to match the upstream and downstream culverts, uh, inverts, so the water coming in that was at the same height as the water going out before and after construction. The hydraulic capacity, which is how much cubic feet per second it can handle, we had to double that. We were at 48 cubic feet per second and they required a minimum of 100 at the time. Uh, we had to put a riprap uh, scour hole, they call them. It's basically just a bunch of big rocks, so you don't get a, a, basically a washout and all the stuff uh, goes downstream. We also have to prevent erosion of the banks, prevent transfer of the sediment, and we also have to increase our water course square footage, which we did through the design. So to achieve that, all those requirements, uh, we have to use the American Association of State Highway and Transportation, which is AASHTO, um, specific designs in regards to the height of the of the what would be the rail. Since we can't use a rail there because we, we have to, let me rephrase that, we have to use a rail system of some sort because pedestrians and cars would drive by it. It's not like it's just in, in the middle of nowhere where there's, you don't have to worry about it. Because pedestrians have to walk by it, that can walk by it, cars do drive, the required rail height is 40, has to be 42 inches. Now because we can't get a rail inside there, like I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, the bridge walls themselves were designed to be 42 inches tall to meet that requirement. Also on the end of it, there has to be four feet of solid wall abutment at the very end so we can attach the guardrail to it. So just like on Post Office Road, we need to have at least four feet here of solid abutment to attach the guardrail. And we could have gone with this design, but the wall is only 12 feet long on one side. So if you take four feet off of one, four feet off another, that leaves four feet of rail, which means we'd have one little section of rail like that, which just isn't going to look right. And the other side was, was really no different. So by building that wall height to 42 inches all the way across, that meets the Ashto standard. There's another one on um, South Maple Street. We could have gone this exact same thing. Here's that four foot of end abutment that you need, but we can't use that rail system because it's just, it's just too short. Sword Avenue, exact same thing here uh, that they used. Again, here's the four foot abutment here. We can't use the rail system because it's too short, so we built everything at four feet. And again, the, the last one uh, was over on the 190 overpass on Route 5. Exact same, pretty much exact same design, but they were able to use that there because they, have, they can put in the, the railings going across. We also have to meet the International Building Code requirement of 42 inches and the Connecticut State Building Code, which references the International Building Code. So there's no way of getting out of making sure that wall is a minimum of 42 inches tall. Now the design itself comes from CONDOT. Uh, it requires, it specifies the, the, the abutments, the bridge attachments, and the guide rail systems. Now all of those have, have met the National Cooperative Highway Research Program impact requirements, which since we follow CONDOT standards, we have to follow these impact requirements. And it's very complicated drawing here shows again what we passed out here. This is the bottom rail um, which helps protect the cars from impact right at the abutment and this is the guardrail that goes down a little further. So in the end what we have is a very very large culvert as you can see here with two feet of natural bottom over here which is that grayer material. That scour pad which helps prevent erosion and, and all downstream which we had to have and the culvert and it doesn't leave much room on the top so this distance here is only basically like a foot and a half or so between the top of that culvert because it is so big now by condon and army corps requirements it's only about a foot and a half tall in between that and here's the wall protecting it the reason why it was 42 inches there's the key point is that the fall height from the edge of the road to the top of the water is more than four feet if it was only a couple feet we wouldn't have needed it but because because it is so, it's such a big drop, we have to have that, that bridge abutment height of 42 inches or a railing. And again, because we don't have enough room to put the rails in, we went the solid design going all the way across. So this area here, this is what you would see on the outlet side, which is on the southerly side. Um, there's an opening there, and this you would see all of this on, if you were standing in the water looking back at it, this is what you'd see. This is on the inlet side, standing in the water, looking at it. Uh, again, there is a little more concrete showing. But in the end, we wound up with this. Because we, again, we needed four feet of solid to here. We needed four feet 
the solid to here so this little bit would have railing and that's it wouldn't be consistent enough and it just didn't look correct at the time so by doing so that 36 inch culvert which we would have been happy to replace with would have only cost us seventeen thousand four hundred forty dollars approximately but with deep requirements and army corps of engineer requirements that bumped the cost now to one hundred fifteen thousand dollars yes so this extra cost of $97,560 equates to about 325 feet of road that we could have done somewhere else in town or set, you know, stay, stockpiled that money to use that, but we had to pay that extra just to meet the requirements to get the road done to, to modern requirements. So the timeline since our first complaint was on September 21st. Uh, right after that, we we started researching what we could do for facing options, which basically means like a, a thin stone veneer or some other sort of work. Uh, we were researching that. I requested a quote right away from Balthazar, the contractor who was on site on the, on the 25th, so four days later. Um, after that, we, re we reviewed with the consultant any alternatives for the guide rail design, anything from the Merritt Parkway ones, wooden ones, or a combination of ones we can do. And I'll get the response to that in a few minutes. Um, Balthazar did submit a quote on the 26th. We received another complaint from EPD uh, on October 4th. And after that, we, we solicited two more quotes on the 29th and the 31st. So we've been, we've been proactive, we've, we've been moving very quickly on this. And we did receive the, the quotes uh, as of yesterday. So I think Lee Construction was $27,000, Waterstone <coughs> was thirty-four, and Balthazar, the original contractor, was 45000 now, in stone facing, this is just an example of one that was recently done by the contractor. And that, the money, the quote that you see here is for the entire, <coughs> all the facades. So the roadway <coughs> side, the two sides, the top, and also on the back side that could be seen from right. first settlers or whatever. So <coughs> it does, it, it is quite a lot of money. Now, because we've exceeded the three quotes over the $15,000, through the finance department guidelines, we have to do plans and specs and basically issue a, issue a new bid over the winter time <coughs> for a FOMO bid in late winter, early spring. And if the, when that gets awarded, it could be a, uh, started in late spring, weather pending. Of course, if it's too cold, they can't put the stuff on. And additional funds will now need to be transferred since we, we transferred what we had left to award the contract. So we're, we're out of money for this particular account. But again, to fund that, we would have to go out to, we would need a transfer to do so. Now the timber guide rail could be used, but the problem is the end anchorages. So what holds those things, what holds those ends down is not compatible with the land area that we have out there. We need a, a minimum of 30 feet in, e in each direction on top from the edge of the abutments out. And we don't have that on, on two of them. We just don't have them. So we have to go with the standard steel system. If we do any sort of hybrid system and there's an accident there and it doesn't contain them and it doesn't stop them from doing it, we are opening ourselves to substantial liability in regards to it being an impact requirements that could fall into the drain. There's, there's a number of uh, bad circum circumstances that could happen if we don't meet these re impact requirements. So going forward, the current design, again, was for safety and budgetary reasons after we had realized we can't just put a 36-inch pipe in. We have to put something in basically $100,000 over what we thought we were going to use. Now, when we budget things five years ago, when I did the budgeting for that, there was no possible way we would have known that a 36-inch pipe could have cost us another $100,000 to do. From the, um, if the town council wants to adopt this look going forward through other referendums and through other projects, we'll be, we get more than willing to do it we just would need direction from you folks if that's what we want to do again in you know in residential areas um, and we will have a neighborhood meeting to discuss the timeline and other details in the spring if we again once it's once the money's transferred we go out to bid we can figure this out we will have a meeting with them to show them what it would look like because we're just going to basically show the the picture that you did see a few minutes ago with the base that thin veneer that's what we're going to stick with for that area and before you open it up to questions, I would thank him for this very thorough uh, analysis. And I will also let you know that consistent with our new policies, we will put this on our website tomorrow. So any concerned citizens, if they read about it in the paper or see this at, uh, at the meeting and want others to be able to share it, it will be there. Right. And I just wanted the two presentations we got tonight from your staff. This is exactly what we need. This is exactly what we need. To the point, 
again, honest. Again, don't skirt the issue. Whatever the issue is, the issue is. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what we need. So I appreciate it from you and from you and from, from uh, the Duns of Fun folks. Again, we can actually then make an informed decision, whether right or wrong. But again, this is exactly what we need. So I appreciate it. Thank you. For a Bruins fan, pretty good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Councilor Crisati. Yeah, Don, thank you uh, for this information. Um, I know that we've been in contact you know, yes. over, over the, the issues that, that we've had over the last couple of months. Um, this presentation was, was, was very good. All right, thank you for uh, presenting that to everybody. Um, I do like that new facade to cover up that area. It does, it does look good. Yep. Um, was not aware of the, the difference in the, uh, the safety standards with the timber compared to the steel rail state guidelines. Yep. Um, so thank you for fully explaining that. I greatly appreciate that. Um, I know that on the original plans and on the original design, I think that they just basically had those two two slabs, and and I don't think they really mentioned about the guardrails. I think in in the original plans, I, I could be wrong because those look a little looked a little different from what I did notice today. All right, but you know, I think on you know, as far as the showing of the guardrails. Yep. Okay, the steel guardrails. So, but your explanation was uh, was excellent on that, okay. so thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Actually, they do have a guardrail that's a more natural color than the um, aluminum color. Yeah, it's, they, it's called a core 10. Yeah. And it's, it, it, it goes in kind of, uh, it looks like this, but it, didn't, it, it rusts. Right. So it, so it basically rusts itself into this it, sort of patina. It, yeah, it blends into the scenery. Yeah. So, so I guess for me, I always have this, this, this question, and is, this water flow that we have that's going on down there, is this, because it's expanded from what it was originally, is this naturally occurring or is this from detention water development from the building of all the homes in the wetlands there that all of a sudden what we had originally has a dramatic change when we go in to redo these things? Yeah, the new guidelines takes into account uh, watershed. It really isn't. So they, the, but the, the watershed has increased. That is so big now that again, that's that's where they're taking on. Just like on Town Farm Road, we went from a 36-inch pipe to a six-foot by 18-foot. Right. So as we Holy develop more of our lands, we right. we shed more water, and as we do this, I mean, we're going to create more and more situations where we have to. Um, really respond in a much larger scale because I kept saying there's got to be a reason for this design and that's the reason in pedestrians it's 42 inches and for the height for any kind of rail and that's what it is but boy it looks like it's going to be fun to climb on. <laughs> Councilor Denny. Yeah great job uh, yeah. and I, I've been aware of the the problem because uh, I, at some point in time I spoke to you about uh, we're going to have this problem eventually down on Orlando Drive, which is a big project uh, dollar-wise for that bridge that, that nobody even knows that there's a bridge there. Mm -hmm. And actually, a bridge lane where this, play, where this was, if you can go back to looking at the original picture, there was kind of like hardly any guide rail there at all. I don't know. You, I, we, I don't think we can see it now again, but oh, yeah, there's right really there. nothing there. There was kind of like nothing there, so it was like a natural habitat that people looked at and seen the nice brook and the and the and the so forth. But because of the water flow, and if you're aware of a Lando Drive, if you <clears throat> excuse me, if you drive all the way down there, you can't see the bridge at all. It looks like there's no bridge there, but there is. Yeah, there's a seven foot culvert there. Correct. Correct. It's seven. <laughs> right. So, thank you for your time, and this is an excellent explanation. Thank you, Councilor Arnold. Yeah, I'd like to see this adopted for all our bridges. Um, most importantly, we're spending, you know, 56 million uh, at a at a pop on getting roads done, and uh, they, they don't have to look like concrete barriers. You know, we could add a little a little style to the town. I think it's a, I think it helps. Um, you know, just the valuation, the value of the houses in the area, and it's a, it makes the town look nice. It's needed for a small cost, because really, you may sound like a lot, but 
you look at that bridge and it's it's just horrible. It just brings the neighborhood down, you know. And, and I, I'd like to see it. Um, I, I doubt I'll have enough time, but I, I would like to see this <laughs> adopted through, um, you know, all our roads programs. I don't know how we go about that, um, but it'd be nice. Thank we've you. we've yep. discussed that, and that's actually simpler because going forward, you you work it into the price. It'll be a minimum, and then we don't have to go back right. and uh, address it after the fact. Deputy Mayor Suzak. I think it's nice to make it look nice, but we got a lot of feet and miles of roads to go. And I got a whole neighborhood right behind me that their road is totally crumbling. You can't even push a carriage down the street. And, you know, we're fixing stuff that, you know, if we maybe knew ahead of time. I mean, you know, there there's things called stamped concrete and other things that can be done. You can use colored concrete <clears throat> and other things that, you know, you're not coming in and spending another hundred thousand dollars and other residents are sitting there with potholes and not having roads that are, are safe to ride drive on. Did, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. And, and what we'll do, and it really will take two actions of the council and going forward because of the cost being over our threshold, we have to go to bid. So that's what I want people to understand. Spring is the earliest because clearly we're going to run into, we have to get bids. Hopefully we'll get some um, good bids as we did. We knew uh, that the $45,000 bid from the first, the contractor on the scene was too much for what we wanted. You've seen a local contractor who we use and is highly respected is, is just about half of that. I don't know if they'll hold those numbers when we go out to bid, but certainly it will give us a little time, um, Councilman Suzak, to look to see about stamp concrete and other options that we could go out to bid. So perhaps it would be more, um, uh, it would be less expensive and e easier done. But again, all we can do is, again, we don't have the money you know, funded at this juncture. And I know that we will, if we do it in the spring and you give authorization at the next meeting, we'll put it on the agenda for uh, next meeting Monday. We're back to back on the 19th for direction one. You know, can we identify a funding source and perhaps by this swing we'd be able to and then give him the OK to go out to bid to find out what a real cost would be. And then we'll have all the pieces together for your consideration. Do you, do you want to comment quickly? I mean, so the other the other question or, or the issue raised, what we've kind of I know it's going to be talked about in D, DPW at some point roads where maybe we don't need a complete rebuild. Right. So we at this point, all things being equal, we're not going to be able to probably at least in the next few years, go get another road referendum. So some of these roads were crumbling, but maybe we don't need a complete rebuild. I know that's part of your, I don't yeah. want to speak for you, but again, just Director, someone asked a question, so I just want to figure to give you a chance to. As Don had indicated, we're trying to be proactive right. and look, no pun intended, down the road. Right. We can't just continue to be reactive. We did the first road project in around 2000. Here we are. We don't have, we need another road project for actually 2020. We've just asked the voters about JFK, but that doesn't mean the roads that are in disrepair right. are going to get better spontaneously. We're trying to come up. We're going to have a presentation in the next month or two about all the road projects we've done, what roads we've done, right. what we need to do next. And by the way, we haven't even finished, and we have to start on the ones we did 20 years ago. So we really need to look down the road 20 or 50 years and stop this hopscotching. The roads are going to continue to be needed to, to have repairs right. and be replaced. So we're going to try to come up with a, a very clear, um, transparent Right. So um, maybe we can do it instead of doing a quick rebuild. Maybe we do some. And we're going to look for that for future exactly. budgets, because yeah. as you said, we may not be able to go to another referendum in right. two years, but we do have to budget each year. And we have sinking funds now that are available. We have to correct and fix some of these the right. roads that are worse. And we also have to be able to in a given winter when your constituents call you and there's potholes that have, you know, or a sinkhole that's been created. We need to be able to have the money to go out there and fix them right. and not say, sorry, we don't have it in the budget. So the Novak report we're looking at right. for those improvements. So we're trying to work on all of these things for you. I think, as the last gentleman said, we had a lot of turnover. Continuity is good. We have a lot of good people on now, so hopefully we'll get you know a, a few years now to really concentrate and not have to worry about personnel and concentrate on the policy. And again, I agree. These, the, the one on South River Street, your presentation, this one, again, keep it up. This is exactly what we need when we're trying to make a decision. Fantastic presentation. I have two quick questions yep. or one comment. We have a bridge that's parallel to Bridge Lane over on Old King Street, which was the original Beeman's Brook. Yep. Beautiful little stone. Maybe you don't have to go into depth. I mean, I'm just saying from a continuity standpoint, we already have an example parallel right across over on. Just saying, just for suggestions, look into it. No, I'd It's done very, very nice, very simple, but a beautiful little bridge that when we did the original Culver back in the 90s, 
you know, because that was our big accomplishment was finally getting that beam and that brook or that bridge yeah. done. Just just saying from a continuity standpoint. And the only thing too is, and it may have changed, but I went over I actually again. I'm not a, I'm not a construction guy, so I, I'm good at finance, but not construction. But I the bridge wasn't level. I don't know if they fixed it, but uh, when you stood there, the one of the concrete would go here. The next one would go like, yo. It was about it was about an inch or so right. off. Right. So I don't know so if that's you'll, you'll, you won't even see that. All right, cool. If it's if it's fa- if its decision is to face it, it won't you won't okay. even notice. It. Just just I mean again, just notice that it looked unusual. Yeah, there's going to be a, there'll be a cap on the top. You won't notice. Yep. But if I can speak to a couple of things on Old King Street, and this is the only so far the only bridge in town where we have not received state funding. Got it. So this is all local money. Right. So we didn't have we. We could have, again, when those were done, that stamp concrete on Old King Street had state funding to it. So we they put that in there because it was state funding. Right. So that's why it would tend to go through that way. No, fair. fair. I mean, I'm just saying as an example, when we look to bid, yep. maybe that's all I'm saying. Yep. Okay. And also regarding the uh, whether we do complete reconstruction versus, like, reclamation. When I first started here in 2013, we didn't do it, almost, almost did no reclamation. Since we here have been trying to introduce that, and that is our first charge to our consultants now, is can this be done right. through reclamation? And complete reconstruction is the last resort. We look for other ways to use to always use reclamation first. So going forward next year, Till, Birchwood, Birchwood Terrace, Birchwood Drive, those are all going to be reclamation. They're not going to be reconstruction, which is a tremendous difference in price. Good. So that is, again, we've been doing that since I've been here, so we've been really we trying to We have a lot of roads that, being honest, lead to nowhere, that we don't need to dig them all up, put That's brand correct. new. I mean, just, I mean, we have a lot of them that are in tough shape all over town. And all right, instead of just, I mean, I, I, I know we'd love to go and build, redo everything and put brand new pipes. But if we can get another 15 years out of a, what you're yep. talking about, that's a win for the taxpayers. Yeah, the drainage is a different issue, but right. the yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, but, the, fair. but the top could be again like we did for post road from post office to buys us the time to you know as JFK gets built, some of the elementary schools are being done, and whatever we do with some of our other buildings. I mean, if it's buying us time, I think that's great. Yeah, so that's how we've been doing it. Again, a great presentation, and Thank you. I hopefully this is a model for other folks who come before us. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But here never. You guys keep asking all these questions. Mm-hmm. Right, no, I agree. Uh, item number seven, public communication. Does anyone like to speak for the Pam, for the council? You get five minutes and just obviously keep your personalities in check. Staying focused. <laughs> Welcome, ladies. Good evening. Hi, I'm Pam Townsend, Enfield resident, and I am one of the two Enfield uh, Reese Across America ceremony coordinator. Um, Vinnie Grady is the um, the other one, and Lori Gates does the uh, convoy. So what I'm here to do is explain a little bit about the Reese Across America. It's a three-part program. The first is the truck convoy. As I said, Lori Gates is the coordinator for the convoy. The convoy will arrive on December 12th, and details have been posted on several of the social media outlets. This is truly an honor to have the convoy come to Enfield once again. Um, Reeds Across America organization recognizes that Enfield does get it when it comes to its vet- veterans. So <clears throat> the second part of the program is the ceremony. The purpose of the ceremony is to remember those that have served and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Honor those that are currently serving and teach the next generation to understand that freedom is not free. The ceremony will take place on December 15th at 12 p.m. at the flagpole at St. Pat's Cemetery located at Enfield Street. The public is encouraged to attend, and of course, so is the town council. The third part of the program immediately follows the ceremony at St. Pat's Cemetery. This is when volunteers lay sponsored wreaths at the final resting place of veterans. Currently, there are approximately 1,500 veterans resting in St. Pat's Cemetery. It is our goal on December 15th to lay a wreath at every resting place. However, the reality is 
we will not be able to do that without the help of the public. If necessary, once we know how many wreaths are sponsored, we will determine which section of the cemetery that volunteers will place wreaths, which means not all veterans' graves will have a wreath. I've provided a copy of the wreath sponsorship form to the town, town clerk to give to you. I've also posted this form on several social media outlets. The more wreaths that are sponsored, the more veterans we can remember and honor. There are two different deadlines, and the form explains both deadlines and more information. Those deadlines are November 23rd, if you want to pick up a wreath for your own veteran. This must be done through the mail. The final deadline is December 3rd, and you can do that online. This will ensure that the wreaths are on the truck for delivery to St. Pat's. But most importantly, if you want a wreath to go to St. Pat's, please use the code for St. Pat's Cemetery or your wreath will go to Arlington National Cemetery. The code is CTSPCE. When ordering online, we will, we, you will see several local fundraising groups. Please select a local fundraising group. For every $15 wreath sponsored, that group will receive $5. Let us never forget. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I know that Enfield gets it. Any questions? What was the code? And it's not on your form. Yeah, yes, okay. yes it is. It's on the bottom. It's in the middle. Right here. Oh, okay, I got it. Thank you. So not a question and answer, but Lori, if you would like to speak while you're here. So the convoy truck, this is our fifth year that they're returning to Enfield uh, at their request, which is huge. Um, we did this in 2011 and 12, and then we had a couple years off. They went elsewhere. This is part of the delivery convoy. So if you look on the Wreaths Across America website, it'll say other locations they're going to. That's the family, the Worcester family. This is separate. This is the only stop they're making in Connecticut is to Enfield. Um, they love the turnout. We've changed the route. Thank you, EPD. Um, we're going to be able to take them past every single public school in Enfield that morning on their way to Parkman so that every school can be out there and experience it and get to talking about veterans and how best to honor and remember. It's, it's a teachable moment, which is part of their theme, remember, honor, and teach. So I appreciate everybody's cooperation. Uh, we'll get three of their semis. Each truck covers a section of Arlington. So the wreaths that come to Enfield, they come separate by delivery truck later on in the week. But on that Wednesday, December 12th, when they're making all that noise coming through town, <laughs> those are three sections for Arlington. Arlington has 70 sections. So you can imagine how many trucks it takes to get from Maine right. down there. So we cool. appreciate all the support and kind of excited to see them come back and get to have every student see this. It's, it's cool. quite an honor. Very well, cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council at this time? Lucian. Lucian Lefebvre, Enfield resident, <clears throat> also Legion commander and member of the Veterans Council. I just want to thank everybody that came out or participated in our Veterans Day parade this past Sunday. This marked 100 years of the end of World War I, which started the Veterans Day. So it was the 100 year anniversary. And like I had said before when I came up and gave a save the date for the parade, the parade to me is the frosting on the cake. The ceremony at the town green is the meat and potatoes of the whole thing. That's what it's about. The parade, like I said, is the frosting, and it's nice to have a parade. I was glad to see some people out. It was a little blustery, but again, the town gets it. And I just wanted to thank everybody that participated or attended. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council at this time? <coughs> Bob. Bob T. Katz, 815 Woodgate Circle. I'm going to explain something. There was an incident in my home a week ago Thursday. I called the police. My daughter's boyfriend that was acting up <clears throat> started throwing punches. They were out there talking to the woman police officer. 
they told him a different story than what happened, that I was the aggressor. So I got arrested for breach of peace. I went into the court the next morning. The prosecutor, I told him the story, family affairs. He says, what are you here? You're the victim. He said, and then he remembered that he was in court about six months ago for attacking my daughter. So anyways, um, I, went, I went to a, talk to Deputy, Deputy Chief Collins f Friday. I told him the story. Well, I got a call today from a police officer. He said, if you want to come in and file a complaint, you're welcome. I'm in between what I want to do. I don't, I'm not the type of person that seeks revenge, but I don't want to ruin her life. So that's my dilemma. But anyways, <clears throat> before you, I uh, have the latest school enrollments. You'll see some numbers in parentheses. Those are the school capacities. And if you do the math, you'll find out that we got uh, about 600 empty seats in the six elementary schools. Um, the trend, if you look at the kindergarten, this year it's 319. Two years ago it was over 400. The trend is d uh, dramatically shifting fast downward. That's the first time with a different birth rate that went below 300. So. That shows you where Enfield's going. If you remember, nine years ago, it had over 6,000 students in the schools. 1970, we had 13,500, 1,900 in the parochial schools. Uh, there's even a possibility you might be able to close an elementary school, the way that if the trend continues, because the births are down to below 300 for the first time. At one time, you used to have 800 going to the kindergarten. And two years ago, it was over 400. And also, uh, the other separate piece of paper is the Open Choice Program, which was started in 2005. They have 103 Open Choice students this year and throughout the school system. And it's kind of broken down. And you can see where the trend is going, 149. I'm for the Open Choice Program, by the way, uh, because this town it does, not, does not have enough diversity. And that's what we need. We need more diversity in this town. We need, we need some other people on the town council that, sh that sh show what the real world is like. If you go into a hospital, you'll see Hispanics, blacks, uh, people from India and everything. They're all working together to save human lives. And that's what we need in Enfield. We need more diversity. And I would like to see a, a dramatic change coming. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? For the first time? For the second time? Hearing none, declare public communications closed. Item number nine, uh, excuse me, eight, councilor communications. Anyone, any council have any communications? Uh, councilor Davis. Oh, I thought that was first. No, go ahead. You had, uh, if you, you had want, your hand up first. you had your hand up first. Uh, you were first, so you had your hand up. <laughs> first off, I want to thank Laura and Pam, Laurie and Pam, for coming and for all that you do with the Reach Across America, the vets, and Luce, same as you, and for the parade and all that you guys do. I personally want to say thank you, um, and it's well appreciative. Bob, thanks, thanks for your research. Always coming with so much stuff for us to look over. I appreciate it. And we are a partial diversity up here. I'm up here. Huh? So, you know, I <laughs> just want to say we do have some, but um, won't say why, but we all know. So, I, well, you got to laugh when I'm trying to talk. Um, I did want to say the other weekend, the local Girl Scouts went and flagged over 3,000 veterans throughout the cemeteries with also American Legions and with the AMBET, so we helped out with that. And I want to thank the Girl Scouts for that. That's something they do every single year. I do think we might have to add to our list our town green out front to put that in the rotation of the Girl Scouts with American Legions um, doing the flags there also. Last week, and also the Girl Scouts, this past Saturday, so they all made homemade cookies. They all got <laughs> together, put them all together with a beautiful thanking our vets on it and delivered over 170 187 veterans throughout our town 
got a knock on their door somewhere at the American Legions for the Marine Corps breakfast, but the ones that were home were personally thanked for their service for our country. And to, to watch them, uh, the reaction of some of these vets, it, it's tear jerking. You end the day with tears, but they're joyful tears. And it's, you know, it's just something. So I want to thank the Girl Scouts again for doing that. Also tomorrow, we have uh, the World Diabetes Day. So November 14th tomorrow. We're blue. We're blue. But also, we have an amazing kid named Anna in town that is sponsoring a walk to raise awareness. She's also collecting donations of diabetes supplies and useful products like glucose tablets, alcohol swabs, etc., to send to those in need. The walk for this awareness is tomorrow night, 6 to 7, at Prudence Crandall School in the gym. So if anybody's around, you know, it would be nice to stop in. It's one hour. It's to bring awareness. She's also working on her silver award with the Girl Scouts, but she's trying to bring more awareness to diabetes. You know, so I'm hoping people do show up and support this young kid that's heavily involved with, out, with throughout our community, and they do a lot already. So I'm hoping we can show our support back to these young kids and Anna and to show that we appreciate what she's doing because this is the future of our country, all these young kids, and we want them involved, and we want to support them so they realize what their cause is, is important to everybody else. So I'm hoping to see everybody there tomorrow. I will be there, so I'll take attendance to see who shows up. No, just kidding. I'm just hoping you, out of kindness of your heart, you would show up and do the small walk. And then uh, to the mayor, to town manager, Chris, I want to publicly thank you again because I'm hearing throughout the community when something's brought to your attention, you might not be able to fix it exactly the way the resident wants, but they feel that your staff is really communicating with them and you're meeting in the middle, and you, instead of saying no, you're actually giving advice and, and helping our residents. So since I've received a, quite a few emails and phone calls, I want to personally say thank you on behalf of everybody that has reached out to me and on behalf of me for all that you're doing for our town. Thank you, and keep up the good work. Thank you. Councillor Denny. Kudos to the town manager and his staff for helping out uh, a few different projects, one on... Um, St. James Avenue, one at uh, Shaker Pines, simple things that uh, instead of going through all the rigmarole, they were kind of taken care of, and it was nice, and the public's happy, and so forth. Uh, I want to th publicly thank uh, the Girl Scouts for bringing my cookies to me because uh, I, I put on about two pounds, uh, but they were delicious and all kinds, and uh, they didn't last in my house uh, very long. Uh, on a, this might not be a positive note, but uh, I'm a, I've been uh, getting phone calls from the senior center citizens again, uh, this a, the after work uh, people, and I don't understand why we have to wait till January 1st when we already have the data about Saturday. Why can't it start December 1st, senior center open, not on Saturday and go back to the night stuff. I don't understand why we, we extended it. The people were here, they all screamed and yelled. There's 10 people on the list. A few homeless people come, sit around, drink coffee, and then we're open on Saturday a half a day. All these people who work, are senior citizens and work and wanna work out at night, they don't wanna wait till January 1st. They want it open. December would be the great, great thing if we can do it. Thank you. Councilor Muller, then Councilor Grisati. Despite the crazy weather, Saturday snowed a little bit, but they worked on the partial roof replacement at Barnard and finished. They worked Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and that's now complete. Thank you. Councilor Grisati. Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I want to... Uh, thank you to the committee over here for the Wreaths Across America. Uh, it's a wonderful event. We're looking forward to that coming up. So, you know, thank you for your, your hard work and, and your work on the parade, Lucian. Good job. Um, the other thing that I want to mention um, is the Opera House players. Um, with their uh, performance that they started last week, uh, my family went to the performance on Saturday night, uh, last Saturday, and it was just a fantastic uh, performance, Broadway musical, uh, Beauty and the Beast. 
Um, and what was really nice was afterwards that the characters, um, you know, that they they met you afterwards and a little reception. So you get to meet everybody that was involved with the play, and uh, it was just a, a wonderful opportunity. You know, this is something that you know we want to bring into on uh, High Street, and I know that they're experiencing some some difficulties with, uh, you know, some funding with the the work that needs to be done, but. We really have to keep keep them here in town. I think this is going to be a wonderful opportunity uh, for Thompsonville. We want to talk about you know the, the starting of uh, projects that that are going to be going, especially with uh, Mr. Bellick's uh, work on his uh, apartment complex down there, and you know, with uh, getting some entertainment down in Thompsonville. But we really need to go out and support them. Uh, they do a fantastic job. The other thing I want to mention was the uh, EFRC Lights On After School program that was uh, at the Enfield Square last week. And uh, you want to see all the kids, you want to see the teachers that are involved with this after school program. Uh, it was an outstanding uh, um, presentation. Um, uh, the mayor um, had everybody doing some exercising there uh, at, you know, which, which was good. He had 200 kids going kind of crazy and <laughs> and he had their attention, you know, which, which was good. So, but it was a, a wonderful event. And once again, Enfield does some real nice things. Um, the other thing I want to mention is the, uh, the, the open house, the tremendous holiday celebration that's going to be uh, sponsored by uh, uh, the Enfield Food Shelf and the Women's Club, uh, which is going to be, uh, they have an open house on Saturday, November 17th from 11 to 4. Uh, I know uh, I had talked to uh, the town manager in regards to the permitting process and, uh, you know, if you can give me a little feedback on, on that as to uh, you know what we can do to help them a little okay but uh, once again um, you know c come out and uh, support that that food shelf I know over at JFK we have a turkey trot coming up monday. and uh, monday is the turkey trot at uh, JFK where they're going to be raising food and money um, and I, I've been a proud sponsor of that program for the last well, I think it's been 15 years that they they've sponsored that so kind of uh, looking forward to that event um, and I know Ed brought up the senior center hours I've had you know being on the Commission on Aging you know they're they say Bob try to just get this thing going don't don't wait till January you know the, the uh, hours on Saturday aren't being used let's just get the the regular hours going instead of waiting that long so just want to reemphasize that point. Uh, I think that's that's about it for now. Uh, one other thing uh, with Don and his communication um, with his presentation tonight over at Bridge Lane, um, you know, and I'm glad that we're going to be working with the residents and making the residents uh, pleased with, uh, you know, getting the resurfacing of that concrete done. So I'm happy about that. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Falk. Uh, on social media, I came across a veteran. His name is Patrick McLeod, and um, he is collecting toiletries and personal hygiene products to take to veterans at the at two veterans hospitals. I think there's one in uh, Springfield and one in uh, Newington, and he is uh, looking for donations. And if um, if you so see it so fit to donate, you can contact him at 860-967-7693. I'm sure he'd appreciate anything he could get that he can forward to those veterans at those hospitals. Uh, to the manager through the mayor, I think at the last meeting I was at, I had asked the question about uh, trash and recycling. Where does it go? Uh, they pick it up in front of our house. What happens to it? And uh, I, I would I'd like to have that answered. And the second one was uh, 
Uh, we had received correspondence about a camera at Woodside Park. I didn't know, I think that's town owned and not owned by the Housing Authority. And I didn't know how that was funded or where that project is going. So if you could address that, that would be great also. Other than that, thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. First of all, everyone who voted, I like, I like to thank them, and I'd like to especially thank the people who had the faith in the town of Enfield and look into the future and voted yes for the JFK referendum. They're looking to 2020. They're looking to, to the future. They're not dwelling on the past and the fact that, you know, we did this in the 60s. They're looking and saying we're going to do something in the 2020s, and I really appreciate that. Um, also, I'd like to spin off on Bob. I actually went Saturday night, took a crew over to see Beauty and the Beast. Fun night out. It was great. Didn't have to drive far. Got home early. But they are doing a fundraiser. And they are selling um, plates that would go on the seats. You could buy a seat for, I think it was $100. So if you've got that person at Christmas that has everything, I bet they don't have a plate for the back of a seat. So maybe we, we kind of can think of things like that that we can do. But again, I can't thank the people enough. I mean, facilities that takes, you know, we'll be getting the building committee met ready. So everybody look to the web to be able to apply to be on. We'll have an interviewing process and uh, it's, it's gonna be a lot of work. It's, it's a good five year project, but and I'm hoping that on Thursday night I get some really good news from Geb, Greg Gabinell on PCBs. <laughs> and I'd like to motion to suspend the rules and move items A1 through A5, E, F, G, H, I, N, J to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Motion, Second. motion made to suspend the rules, seconded by Councilor Falk. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed? All in favor, zero against. And real quick, Chris, to the uh, two things through you. Uh, do we do, does the rec department do uh, judging on Hall folks who decorate for Halloween? Like, do we still do that in a Christmas, folks who? Christmas they do. Uh, um, they used to do too bad, it. Mary, if you had if I know, you I should ask earlier. Here, but I, I'm not familiar, but I can ask. And Because there's, there's some really pretty cool Halloween, uh, you know, decoration. I mean, it, folks did a really good job, so someone asked. So if we don't, maybe we can think about doing it next year. And then, um, to, you know, if we could send uh, what, our email to the superintendent, again, we'd like to s start having discussions on for reforming the security committee with the board added joint committee and also adding civility to it as well, which we've mentioned before, so we can kind of get that started, you know, just a joint committee, uh, get that started so we can start addressing some of the issues. Um, I just want to just just encourage folks. I know uh, we're getting towards Thanksgiving and the holidays where food is going to be, uh, folks going to be eating a lot of food. I joined a 61 day challenge at tr through Trinity Health. Um, I don't smoke, so it was an easy one there, but um, I do enjoy Christmas cookies. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, folks, maybe just uh, instead of having 10 cookies, only have nine cookies. But again, I encourage folks to join. Uh, start getting your better health as you move into the new year. And again, the more healthy, the healthier we are, the happier we are. Um, just want to give a shout out to the nurse over at Parkway Pavilion. Great job, uh, my new best friends. So I want to say hi, and also just uh, want to re re reiterate. I know there's a lot of folks, and I see it when I walk and I'm around town. Folks are a lot of folks have helped other people with leaves, neighbors helping neighbors. But I know this is a tough part of year when there's so many leaves coming down, and I, I see it all the time where someone who may have a tractor or is helping their neighbor out. Folks, we get the spotlight, go to the t website and nominate a neighbor who helped you with your leaves. Because I know it is a tough, tough job. And uh, I know so many of the, you out there have done it. Keep up the good work. Nominate a neighbor who helped you with your leaves. And um, in closing, I think uh, the, I think that's it. I have, I have one thing. Website to make sure that they're weakest. Yeah, and, and, and get their bags out. Yeah, exactly. The, the check the website. We had the presentation last meeting. To, to Councillor Denny's point that, again, when your bags need to be out, but I know we're doing, we may go back, take a look. If I know some neighbors or some folks, their leaves haven't fallen yet, which is amazing because I think most parts of town, the leaves are all over in the ground. But again, check the website. I have a question along that line, yeah. and that is we were in the District 1, and the leaves were still on when they came around. And I had heard rumor that they would come back sometime, but the public doesn't know exactly when they're coming back. 
Do you want to wait till so town, somehow? Well, can we have wait to town manager? Um, I'll ask Donald to yeah. come up under my report yeah. and give an update because he also looked at yard waste and the costs of. Right. including two more salaries, including this week. Some of you may not have seen it because you got it to me, me today, and I just sent it out so we can have them do it live. Okay. Thank you. We'll move right into item number nine, town manager report. I'm ready to go. All right. Well, if I forget any of you, you had a lot, you threw at me, so if I forget to address any one of yours, please uh, raise your hand and I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer it. Um, starting with the senior center hours, there was a lot of discussion on that. We did do polling, then we did do a collection of the empirical data of people coming on the weekends, and then I made the decision uh, to go back to the previous hours and extend them. In doing that, staff had asked Mr. Jason Ely and Mary, uh, because of they're, they're trying to fill a position of a secretary there and others that are getting trained, they asked if they could do it. It would be difficult to do it before January 1st, so could they implement it then? So I'd like to assure people the decision to go back has been made, but I really have to defer to the staff on their ability to do it and not take away from other other uh, duties there or to jeopardize or not do it the right way. So I will share with them your uh, your anxiousness to get it done as soon as possible, and if they can accommodate it sooner, I know that they will. Um, in regard to the fee structure that Mr. Uh, Crisati had discussed, the town attorney uh, may be able to address some of that issue as to how we help them. Because basically what this is, this is in regard to a lot of permitting. Again, the state requires this in regard to bazaars and raffles, and they used to have a fee schedule where uh, they did most of the administrative. Uh, they then shifted kind of like an unfunded mandate, and it came last year to the, in the last year or two to the towns, you adopted a fee structure. So their main concern was this, just in a nutshell, the fee they paid previously per day was $20. The state said the town would take it all over and do all the administrative. So to cover those costs, they said the maximum amount per day would be 60, and that's what the council adopted to cover those costs of administration. They had uh, gotten a permit last year to do six days, so it was $120. This year to do the six days, it would be obviously 320, but they doubled it to extend it to do it for uh, 12 days. So of course it's, uh, you can look at the math, but seven, $740. So it is, it is much higher. And I'll let the town attorney address in her report how you can remediate that. Um, I would just like to mention that consistent with our promise that at the next meeting, which is uh, just short, shy of a week, the November 19th meeting, we will have a presentation by the town consultant Woodard and Kern. Um, I met with them this morning, and they're going to have a presentation from 6 to 7 at that meeting, a special meeting. I want to be very clear. We'll do it up here so it will be recorded and people can watch it. But they will address many of the concerns and questions regarding the adoption and citizens' concerns at the water pollution control. So I'm hopeful that that will answer a lot of questions, and their presentation is going to be quite thorough, and you will be able to ask questions of them. We had told the public that they would come back, and we would address their concerns, and we're doing just that. Uh, likewise. The town attorney had been asked in regard to the motor vehicle ordinance. It was really kind of an untenable uh, title, but it's, it's unregistered motor vehicles. And she has done the work. She has a draft, true to her word. She's going to give a more uh, lengthy report, but I will tell you that it's on the agenda for the next meeting. She's going to outline where we are, but it will be open for discussion. And my hope is that we'll have final input from the council, public, and then at the December meeting, we can have our hearing and adopt it as we promised. Um, in regard to trash and recyclables, I'll have Donald come up at the end so we can be the big, f the, the finishing act. Um, cameras, uh, one camera, I think the one you allude to, we're going to have on an item for the agenda tonight on the housing uh, authority cameras, and there's a cover memo and it explains where they're going to go and tie in with our crime center theme. In regard to the other camera, it was donated. And that's just one camera. Uh, we've had a lot of requests in a lot of areas uh, to do cameras. We're actually looking at some residents have offered to pay for town cameras. So we're looking at that, the town attorney as well, to see. Much like, I think, contributing to the canine fund or to uh, Friends of the Library or Senior Center, I think it's doable. It's just a matter of coming up with the right format and then what I always try to do is look at what is the initial cost, and then, of course, there will be the legacy of the maintenance and replacement. But technology has become so reasonable, I think that that's something we could absorb going forward in our budget. But it would all come before council to accept. <coughs> um, in regard to security, I did meet with Gary Harrison 
um, and he's the chief of security at the schools. We had a very broad ranging discu discussion about his concerns and updating me. One of his questions was to, to reconstitute uh, that committee and we need to do it because he has an obligation to do grants. Um, he also needs to have some plans approved. State law requires such a committee to approve them. So he will, I told him to bring that forward to talk to the um, superintendent and we'll, that will be for your consideration moving forward. Um, I also wanted to update as we are doing our water pollution control, I will let everybody know on our website weekly we are updating the progress. We have a meeting every single week and then monthly with the state. We had that today. It's so moving forward on schedule. Uh, it's about 8% completed. It's a two-year project. But one of the questions I received from members of the council and also the mayor is, well, what about the state share? Uh, the Department of Corrections uses our uh, sewer system and in an agreement that was worked out previously by the prior director and the state, it's about $3.1 million. So show us the money. Um, I talked to our consultant today, uh, Fuss and O'Neill. They're following up with the state counterparts. It has to go through the bond commission. And the State Bond Commission canceled their meetings to meet in September, October, and November. And uh, this, he doesn't know if there's going to be one in December. Um, now, I said to them that find out because it really is promised regardless of what the bond commission may or may not do but that's that's where we're at and i'll keep you posted um and then i'm going to have mr uh director noons come up to answer the recyclables uh question and i think there may have been another one and i just want to say i appreciate your positive comments to staff about their attitude and i think it comes from the top down my office, Debbie and Maya, we really try to stress customer service and talk to our residents and help them. But all of our staff is doing that. Some did it before, but all of the new ones we've hired and the ones who are here, we've made it a priority. I just want to share with you, we've hired some, a good amount of top um, level directors. We have two more announcements in the next several weeks. I will tell you, uh, they watch these TV programs. They watch what you're doing how you're treating each other and how you're treating me and the staff. So kudos to you because they've told me if, if it wasn't this respectful and civil and they can see this level of cooperation and commitment, they're not going to come here. So I think it's a testament to everybody. It's a team effort from top to bottom. We all have to row in the right direction. We're all in this together. And I think uh, going forward, we will make some very positive changes for the town. But I thank you for your support and direction because all of the staff sees it. I think the residents do. And now we're seeing employees want to come and work here because they're watching it and seeing it as well. So I thank you. Donald. Welcome back, sir. Yes. Good evening again. <laughs> Councilor Falk, uh, both recyclables and trash go to USA Waste on 1221 Harvey Lane in Suffield. And then where does it go? Do you have any idea? I do does not. Does it go to Springfield? It goes to Mars. It goes to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know after that. I don't know the chain of custody after okay. that. So. He doesn't run their business. I know. Thank right. you. Um, on regarding the, the the leaves pickup, yes, there is a rumor out there that we will go back when we do have time to do that. We don't. Publish, we don't publicize and we don't, we don't make that promise that we can go back because if things get really heavy, we don't want to say we can, then we don't wind up doing it. Then you folks get calls and we get calls and things don't work out that way. So it just, it's just better for us that if we have time to go back, we will go back and we will make one further sweep. But if you don't tell people to put it out, it's not going to be out there waiting. It's always out there. Right. It's, it's, it's never agree. a point. I, I agree. Right. And they can, they can bring it to the dump. Right, you bring it to the free. transfer station anytime yeah. except for Monday. So, so, I mean, there's other options. Yes. Yep. Yep. There's Sunday hours, right? Yes. Yep. Sunday hours just for, right. yeah, just for this. So I did send uh, the manager a thing about working on overtime, working overtime for the two Saturdays that we are missing uh, from the leaf collection, but that was taken out again through the budget process to help try to curb that, um, to lower our overtime down. So just those two Saturdays alone would cost on an eight-hour shift. If if we do complete it all in eight hours, it'd be sixteen thousand seven hundred forty dollars and eighteen cents, which would leave us a balance in our overtime account for our RM for seventeen thousand one hundred fifty-four dollars, and that's all right now. So that would be comp basically halved. All right. We would have that's that for. Yeah, could, we, could you send us out a price breakdown on that, please? Uh, man hours, dump yeah, fees. Yeah, did, did, again, that was when we it? sent it out today. Yeah, Just today, you probably didn't it. get it. Yeah. Well, I sent it probably, I don't know what time yeah, this afternoon. You got it. You got, if you didn't, I'll send This afternoon? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, I just I'll got it today. It right now. I was preparing for this meeting, so I didn't get it I out immediately, yeah. perhaps. It, it does factor in, uh, our again, our RM staff, but also fleet has to be on call. So there's, there's, two, there's a head mechanic 
our lead mechanic and another mechanic on duty the entire time. If they're not working on breakdowns, they are working on other stuff, but it's still charged to RRM at the time. We still need them there to go in case something happens. Thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, item number 10, town attorney report. Good evening, everyone. As Christopher said, I would like to just update you a little bit on the motor vehicle ordinance. As you know, back on October 1st, we had the public hearing in order to have uh, a review of some of the issues with just the pieces that the police found difficult to enforce. A number of people came forward, made a number of comments about things that they thought were issues, and the council also put forward some ideas. So in early October, we met with the town manager's enforcement staff and the manager and development services to see about making those changes that would satisfy everyone. We sat down, we made the changes, and then we sent everything back, to, when I say we, the legal department, sent everything around to staff to have some more input. We also presented the ideas to development services and they were at least approved in concept. So once we sent this draft around for everyone to take a look at, they had some more ideas and that's the beauty of teamwork. Um, it was pretty clear that while we suggested that there be a mirroring between property maintenance and motor vehicles, since in many cases they were the same, the, the goal of the motor vehicle ordinance way back when was to address junkie cars, to put it in the colloquial speak. It was not for unregistered motor vehicles, it was not for hobbyists, it was primarily this junkie feature. So. When enforcement staff looked at the latest revisions, they had more ideas about how to make it simpler. So what we will be presenting to development services on Thursday is going to be more of an omnibus, if you will, to address everything and rather than have the two separate ordinances, just combine it as one. So Love simple. I, and I think it will be in the long run, but you know, you don't necessarily get there all at once. Right. It's by everybody looking at it and say, okay, this might be a duplication of effort, this might be inconsistent, and can it be made to be totally consistent? So we'll see what development services thinks at the time. I mean, we have the, the draft that was more complicated, but I think this one simple draft, you know, you'll decide. This is when you have it. And, and I think I'll, I'll add it. it. It is. Simplicity is best. Have it in one document, right. one-stop shopping. And also the, the concern of the council, many members, was this blight review. If we had had it in just the new motor vehicle, we were going to have to go to the blight and reopen that and do it anyway. So this, we put it in one place. Um, and as I had said to you, we also have funding in place to increase some staff areas for blight officers and persons to enforce it so that we just don't make it a paper tiger we have the funding available all of that would be given to you at the same time for your consideration if you if you like the changes and want to implement it then I would be recommending at that time we do these additional personnel changes all within the budget uh, and I think it's going to be a very cohesive um, piece of legislation when we're done thank you you're welcome thank you and then in terms of the bazaar fees Going forward, you can make changes, but as it stands now, to, to just kind of ad hoc make a change, I don't really think is permissible. You could have a waiver or some sort of abatement going forward, but since it was passed, it's essentially your legislation and the fees are, are pretty much what they are. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Item number 11, any report of any special committees of the council? Hearing none, item 12, a little business on page one, appointments A1 through one and two, we have none. On page two, three through 14, we have none. Do I have a, a motion for item 15 to be removed from the table? So moved. Uh, motion by, by Deputy Mayor Suzak, second by Councilor Denny to move item 15. <clears throat> Historic District Commission, term of office for Linda Fallon, expired on 831, 2018. This would be a reappointment. Do I have, uh, excuse me, for all those in favor of removing from the table by a show of hands? Opposed? We have nine in favor, zero against. And do I have a nomination on the floor? Deputy Mayor Suzak? I'd like to nominate Linda Fallon for another term. So a nom uh, nomination by Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councilor Falk. Close nominations. Would anyone like to motion to close? Close, close. nomination by Deputy Mayor Suzak, so seconded by Councilor Falk. All those in favor of closing nominations by a show of hands? Opposed? On the main motion to appoint Linda Fallon, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Arnone. Four. Councilor 
Sakala. Linda Fallon. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Linda Fallon. <coughs> Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Linda Fallon. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item 16 remains on the table. We move to page three. Item 17 through 20, again, remain on the table. Item B, town manager appointments, one through nine, we have none on page three. Items 10 through 14, we have none. Uh, under old business, item C, discussion. Rem again, we just talked about the amendment to the town code. That'll be for next meeting, so that remains tabled. Item 13, new business. Again, we have no item A, no consent agenda, no appointments by the council for item B. Item C, no appointments by the town manager. And item D, no, no P and Z commission approved appointments. Item 14, item discussion of uh, A through one through five has been moved to miscellaneous for the consent agenda. Item B, appointments, town council appointed. Item one, ethics commission. Uh, this would be a reappointment for Phil, excuse me, no, so that stays on the table. Correct? Uh, do no, we have, no, we no have that he's one? linked. This is a reappointment for Phil Colbert. Yep. Do I have a motion to, since it's new business, do I have a motion to have a nominee? Do I have Mayor Suzak? I nominate Phil Colbert to serve another term on um, Ethics. A nomination so, made, second. seconded by Councillor Falk. Was there a motion to close nominations? So moved by Councillor second. Falk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. All those in favor of closing nominations by a show of hands. Those opposed, we have nine in favor and zero against. Any discussion on the main motion to reappoint Phil Colbert? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Phil Colbert. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. And Deputy Mayor Suzak. Phil Culver. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item two, no, no, do we have no appointment? Item three, Housing Authority, term of Barbara Lawrence. Do we have a nomination to reapprove? I'd like to nominate Barbara Lawrence. We have the historic district. We have one of the historic, too? Yep. Oh, we do? I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. I apologize. Uh, we go back to item two. Or do we? Historic. Di I didn't see it in the. No, I think it's I didn't, a Yeah, I didn't, we didn't have it in a packet. Oh. You are correct. A resignation. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I was right, folks. It's I was right, for the record. <laughs> for the record, it's highlighted. <laughs> we have a red highlight on there. You paper guys. That's paper guys got it right. <laughs> item three. <laughs> got it right. Housing Authority, a reappointment for Barbara Lawrence. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Barbara Lawrence. Motion by Councilor Falk. Yeah. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Do we have a motion to close nominations? To close. Deputy Second. Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Denny. All those in favor of closing nominations by a show of hands. We have nine in favor, zero against. Do we have any discussion on yeah. the main motion to yes. reappoint? I, I was at the, uh, the last meeting, and she is the, um, uh, the resident member of the commission, and she had expressed a desire to be reappointed. So she's doing a good job, and she is, the again, the resident appointee. Any further discussion? Bring none. Roll call, please. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Barbara Lawrence. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Barbara Lawrence. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item C under new business town manager appointed. We have none. Item D P P and Z commission appointed. We have none. Items E, F, G, H, I, and J have been moved to miscellaneous. So item 15 is miscellaneous under item A, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to um, approve the consent agenda? So moved. By Councillor Sakala, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Any discussion? I know, Chris, real, high, real quick for folks, items 1, th these are all grants, correct? Basically? Uh, one and two. One and two are grants, and it's money that we receive that we're now uh, putting, uh, transferring, so they can expend the money uh, for the stated purpose of the grants. Number three um, is for human resources. This is an internal transfer uh, for some seminars uh, for the HR director to attend in his specialty of uh, personnel and HR. Uh, request for transfer to the building department. This is a part-time position uh, uh, that is there, and we need to transfer this from salaries into part-time so that they can appropriately spend it. We don't know if that person is interested in staying. If they were, we would do it long-term, but not at this juncture. And the fifth one, Suzanne could expound upon it, but it's a town clerk historic um, grant to preserve 
historic records, and so she would like to spend that and preserve some more records. Right. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Nope. Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Sakala. He's out, <laughs> sorry. Um, Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. There's eight in favor and against and no abstentions. Well, again, staying in miscellaneous item E, discussion resolution request to transfer funds for public works vehicles, $130,906.30. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. Two light and medium truck replacement from the light and medium vehicles account 31008856-573200 of $130,906.30 from auction proceeds revenue, proceeds revenue from auction proceed, proceeds of, of account 31042015-417027 of $130,906.30 certified on October 30th, 2018 by John Wilcox. The funds are available our Director of Finance, approved by Town Manager on 9-11-2018. So moved. By Councillor Anone, seconded by Councillor Denny. Um, any discussion? There's a good uh, cover memo. Mr. Nunes is here if you had follow-up questions. But basically, as you approve, and, and now you raise the threshold, but we, we get rid of surplus equipment and they keep it in a fund. So this is no impact on the budget. That fund has uh, enough money in it. Uh, it's 137000 plus current balance. They have had to retire two vehicles from building and grounds fleet due to corrosion and age. These vehicles both have plows to augment building and grounds and are necessary for them to do their, their work. So so this money, wonderfully, is money that they were able to, to uh, pay for these vehicles out of surplus and old equipment being uh, sold. So I recommend it, but he is here if you have any other further questions on that. Anyone have any questions for Donald? No, Joey looked at it. He said, no. okay. okay. This is great news that you guys are selling uh, old vehicles and be able to purchase new ones. That's great. Roll call, please. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item F, discussion resolution under miscellaneous request for, trans for transfer of funds for public services stipend of $16,600. Be it resol resolved in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. The from two public services, stipend other, Count 1020500-516900 of $16,600 from police services. Other supplies, 1020500-561900 of $6,100 from uniforms. Account 1020500-565000 of $6,000 and from other equipment fund. Uh, a, a line item of 1020500-573900 of $4,500 certified on October 23rd, 2018 by our Director of Finance, John Wilcox, approved by uh, Town Manager Chris Bromson on 11 9 2018 so By Councillor Muller, Second. seconded by Councillor Crisati. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing on roll call, please. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. And Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. There's nine in favor and against no abstentions. Again, under miscellaneous, item G, discussion resolution, request for transfer of funds for public safety of $149,400. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. Two, DUI enforcement program of overtime 25006049-514000 of 145956 Medicare 25006049-522100 of 2116 dollars from Workman's Comp of, of account 25006049-526000 of a $1,153 and unemployment of two, uh, account 25006049-525000 of $175 from DUI enforcement program, the DUI enforcement account of 2504000-460490, Certified by John Wilcox that the money is available on October 26, 2018, certified, approved by the town manager on 11-9-2018. 
Second. Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Arnone. Chris, real quick. Uh, yeah, briefly, yeah. this is a, a quarterly grant that we receive uh, for DUI enforcement in the town, and it's 100% reimbursed. And this is, again, a transfer of the grant for the police department to expend it. Any discussion on the motion? Here, none. Roll call, please. Councilor Arnone. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Davis. Four. Councilor Denny. Four. Councilor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item H under miscellaneous discussion resolution, resolution authorizing the town manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Enfield, with the Enfield Housing Authority. Resolve that Christopher W. Bronson, town manager, is empowered to execute and deliver in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield a memorandum of understanding with the Enfield Housing Authority subject to the review and approval of the acting town attorney prepared by Deputy Chief Gary Collins on October 5th, 2018. By Councillor Muller. Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Chris, this is uh, this Yeah, this is, the is very brief. This is a, uh, a win-win for both uh, entities. It is at no cost to the town. The housing authority has cameras. They seek to give us permission to integrate it with our, um, as I had said previously, our town-wide system of, of a crime prevention center through cameras. Uh, they have about six locations now. This will also encompass any future cameras, but it will allow us to view them. Uh, as we also have the capability to view the high school cameras. So we want to codify it, and I think it's a good situation and just expands our ability uh, to have access to areas and surveil them. Any questions? Yes. Councilor Falk? Um, as far as the uh, Housing Authority, uh, was there some agreement that we give, you give, and we compromise on these cameras? In other words, you let us use these cameras that they want something in return? No, I think they're being good neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, there's no cost to the town. Um, they maintain them. Uh, we don't have to purchase them. And uh, I think it was just a good collaborative effort that Chief Fox worked out with Scott Bertrand, their executive director, that's mutually beneficial to both parties. Mm -hmm. I, I know I was at their last meeting and the subject came up and, and uh, they were hoping to negotiate uh, some sort of an arrangement with the town. They have. Currently, their IT services are through Cox, and they were hoping to incorporate into the town uh, network. Uh, and I didn't know if that was part of these discussions. No, they aren't asking for any quid pro, po, quid pro quo. It's getting late. Um, you know, they don't want anything in return. Mm -hmm. I, I did meet with uh, Scott Bertrand on several other issues that are of mutual interest to the town and to the housing authority, but that was not broached. Mm -hmm. Certainly, if they want to come forward as we, you know, assist the fire departments with IT, we also have a, a, a collaboration with the Board of Ed. It's certain, some, certainly something we would look at if it's mutually advantageous. But no, they did not ask for anything in regard to this. Okay. And I also invited Mr. Bertrand to come to be a special guest in the next month or so to discuss with us uh, plans uh, for infield housing to explain uh, eligibility <coughs> and who, how to apply and, and what they offer. They have some upgrades that are coming, uh, and I offered our assistance in doing that. They're going to need some input from the town. So I think it continues to be a very collaborative and positive uh, relationship. Thank you. Any other questions? Bring in roll call, please. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzanne. Four. There's nine in favor and against and no abstentions. Again, under miscellaneous discuss item I, discussion resolution authorizing the town manager to accept surplus equipment under the military surplus 1033 program. Resolve that Christopher, D Christopher W. Bronson, town manager, is empowered to accept surplus equipment and supplies exclusive mil mil military style vehicle. Excuse me, exclusive of military style vehicles or weaponry under the military surplus 1033 program for the benefit of the town, the Enfield Police Department with later notice to the, town, uh, to the town council of the acceptance of such equipment or supplies. Any such request will be continued upon a determination of the need of the chief of police and the budgetary resources to facilitate obtaining and maintaining the items sought. Prepared by Chief, uh, chief Fox and on the date 20, uh, October 22nd, 2018. So moved. By Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Denny. 
I yeah, briefly that's... again, it spe specifically excludes any military vehicles or weaponry. This is limited to what, what they're looking to do is it's first come, first serve. They've asked me a couple times in the last several weeks. These things will go up, and the military says, come get them today. So what I said is, well, we have the council has to accept that. But if we always have to wait, it's going to be gone. So, for instance, they sometimes have vehicles that they would like to use for undercover. Um, there's certain certain uh, types of equipment like gym equipment that's in really good shape that we could accept. So I asked the chief to come up with this and what the criteria I had him uh, look at was what he included. One, there's a need. Two, we're not getting a pig in a poke. If we're getting it, it's in good working condition. They have the ability in their current budget to maintain it and keep it. And what we'll do is this way, if they call me tomorrow morning and say, you know, X is available and it's something we deem appropriate, I could say, go ahead, send, you know, a couple guys to get it. And then I would inform you with the next meeting. Otherwise, we'll never be able to, to react quick enough. But again, it's not equipment. It's no tanks, no bazookas, no helicopters. Oh, maybe. We, we, maybe. We were, but, you know, for instance, for it could be it could be a boat. Yeah. For a tank. Yeah. It could be a couple of 50s could be a boat on the river or again they're looking at gym equipment but uh, i'll i specifically made sure they will assess if they get there and it needs all kind of work and we, we're not going to we're not going to take right. it yes so, so even the dual fuel stuff that the military Correct. sells is very difficult for civilian uh, mechanics to deal with so a lot of it is it ends up being junk and we end up having to store it no and that goes with a lot of the the personnel vehicles too right. Um, no. And that's what, a lot of times they end up costing us money. So you said you're going to go through it, and I trust you. I had that exact <laughs> conversation with Chief Fox. He recognizes it, that it cannot be something that we get, and then we'd say to fleet, we need a new engine. It right. needs new tires. they got to make the assessment. He put it right in the criteria. He'll make sure it's in good working order, and that whatever it costs to register it or to maintain it in a normal way, he has resources. He's not going to come back to you and say, well, again, we have it, and now we did. we got a pig in a poke, a white elephant. No, that's great because that's that's what worried me. I was going to vote against this no. because too many towns are buying this stuff yeah, and they're thrown in the back yeah. and they're, it's it's just collecting yeah. rust. So the safeguard, he'll make the assessment. I'll you know make sure I agree with it and then we'll bring it to you immediately at the next meeting to tell you what it was and why. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Councillor Anoni. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Kasai. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Falk? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. There's nine in favor, one against, and no abstentions. Item J under miscellaneous, the discussion resolution creating a great youth and family services program coordinator job description. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby amend the classification plan to amend the job description for the position of Youth and Family Service Program Coordinator, submitted on October 26, 2018, by Don Homer Boothier, Director of Social Services. By Second. Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Arnone. And this is, again, in all the job descriptions we've passed over the last few months. I think that's it. Yeah, it's an update. Yep. You worked with the HR director. There's no budget impact, and it's just updating an outdated, antiquated Shoot. job description to reflect the duties and responsibilities of the job today. Yep. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstention. Item 16, public communications. Seeing no one in the audience. <laughs> Moving on to 17, <laughs> councillor communications. Anyone? <laughs> Councilor Sakala. Really quickly, just like to thank the Enfield Teachers Association for donating the uh, two benches that are out there by the Veterans Wall here on the town green. Um, they donated in sort of the honor of veterans and to all those who served. So thank you to the uh, Enfield Teachers Association. Anyone else? Hearing none, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. By Council Councilor Denny, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion and we are adjourned.